This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. This is Night Owls with Alan Robson. Call 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. Lots and lots to talk about, but remember, I want to know exactly what made you the most frightened you have ever been in your entire life. And we're starting off with Louise in South Shields. Hi, Louise. Hello, Alan. Long Hello, time no speak. <laughs> well, it's good to have you back. First on well, tonight, starting us off as well. Good on you. I know. I was just saying to Chris, it's the second time I had this on us, so hey. I'm, I'm really chuffed. There you go. So, you know your um, place. Right. Well, I'm going to I'm gonna crack on because there a lot happened since I last spoke to you anyway. Yeah, what's happening? Um, I mean, obviously, you know, I suffer with anxiety and sure. things like that. Yes. Um, I've actually made it back to work, and I'm oh. really on a positive how, positive high. How so. did you manage that? Because, I mean, that, you, you sounded like you were a fair way away the last time we talked. Um, I don't know, to be honest with you. Right. <laughs> um, I've really just sort of, like, turned things around and put a positive spin on life and mm -hmm. just said, you know... I need to sort of do things sort of I need to do things for myself but I need to sort of do things for my family as well and right. if I don't try I don't know. Right. So I've just said yeah I'm going to go for it and I feel I've, I've had two weeks back at work and I feel quite positive and it's sort of slotting in quite nicely so So I mean, the, the things that you were frightened of of what would happen if you did go back to work you know if you felt that like yeah. the anxiety was going to take over or whatever how was it? I mean, have you had any hints of it? And has it has it been creeping in? I've had a couple of hints of it, but it's mostly been when I've like been sitting at home and sort of mulling over things. And I mean, you get like the family saying, "Look, at, you know, nothing is going to happen. You need to sort of turn it around and say nothing's going to happen. You're fine." And it's like I sit there and I say to myself, "I am fine." I sort of practice any sort of like anything that I got off like a therapist, any mm. sort of. Yeah. practicing kind of thing so um like breathing and exercises things like that so i do sort of little bits of them and it, it sort of it does help me through mm. so i do but, think though that as people especially in the northeast where we're the least kind of uh i'm in therapy uh, in america everybody you talk to is in therapy and they've, they've been yeah. in therapy since those ah, i went into therapy first when i was five when i had those issues and you're thinking we don't really fully comprehend it here. And you, no. you've needed it. And uh, the techniques they've taught you, obviously, have grounded you enough to be able to, to face the tricky bit, to, to face your fears. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I mean, I, I think it's true. Like, obviously, my son as well. I've, mm. I've got him to think about, and it's like, yeah, you, yeah I, I've, I've got to know. do this. No, yeah, you're absolutely right. And yeah. the, the thing is, if, you, if you've if you shown him the way, you, 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 you don't stop, you crack on. Exactly. And I think that's sort of one of the positive outcomes oh, of all this because it's, you know, it's, it is showing him, you know, how he, if I can do it, you can do it. No, kind for of sure. Because so. I know somebody from, from years ago and his mother and father, the dad didn't work on purpose, really. He did a bit yeah. of fiddle work down the back lane fixing people's cars, but it was like a couple of hours a week. And he'd get, you know, 30, 40 quid in his hand. Yeah. And uh, the mother said that she was suffering from uh, something. I'm, I'm not sure it was anxiety, but it was it was some condition that made that she couldn't work. And yeah. my mate was growing up thinking, oh, well, this is what you do. You're either poorly and you can't work, or you're unemployed and you do a bit of fiddle work. And that's the only example that he had. And I, uh, I watched my dad work from the moment he got up till the moment he went to bed. And when he came back from work, he went and did something else somewhere else, you know. So, so yeah. and that's the kind of example that will get you successful because you look at what they do and say, if he can do that. And, you know, you, whether you realise it or not, uh, if you're a mummy or a daddy, you, that's the kind of example that you, you're you setting, whether you realise yeah. it or not, you know. It's hey, so the kind well of example we want, we want to set for for me son anyway no, so absolutely. it's a good example well done you um well the most frightening moment of my life um <laughs> yeah, what was well that? i mean obviously anxiety in itself is mm. a very frightening thing but sure. the, the one that sticks in my mind the most was when i was in the middle of having my son um i was high on gas and air 
And I've, I've never had an operation in my life, Alan. I've, I hate hospitals. I mean, yeah, loads of people do, don't get me wrong. For sure. But I've never had an operation in all of my life. Never been cut open, not anything. Uh-huh. And the turn around said to me is, the only way that won't get him out is because he's stuck, is by emergency C-section. Ah, uh, right. So I'm, I'm high on gas and air. Sign your life away. <laughs> Uh, but it was it was absolutely frightening because it was actually one of the things that I didn't want to happen. Right, right. And it was a very frightening moment for me. And I'm, I'm sitting there going, well, what do I do? What do I do? But I knew deep down what I had to do because at the end of the day, it was either that or he wouldn't be here today. Right. And I hadn't walked around right. with him in my belly for nine months for nothing. No, no of course <laughs> not. No, but uh, like yourself, I mean, your body... And, and I've never f- fully understood why hospitals use caesareans as much as they do because why can't babies be born the way they've been born all over the world for thousands of years you know yeah. it just seems well why should you have to to do you know it's like you've got a car come out one of the doors you don't have to go in the sunroof yeah. um, and that that's kind of what it is and yet doctors say it's the safest thing for you quite often and uh it can also be beneficial to the baby so yeah, you've got to go with what the experts say. But if any exactly. night owls would like to explain to me why about every baby out of it's, it's almost like one in two have a, have a cesarean birth rather than uh, rather than a normal birth. And I, I thought, what a great way to get born, you know, if you had a choice, is that one where you sit in like a big baby bath, you know, the... Like oh, little... yes, the water birth. <laughs> I think, how cool would that be? You've yeah. got a flume before you, you're you being born with a... I just think that would be tremendous. And well, I... my, my mum always used to say about me being born, I, I was a breech baby. Oh, and the, right. the, the, She obviously naturally with me, and she was like, you know, nowadays, nowadays you'd have to have a C-section. Right. That, 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 that's... That's what that's the differences of like today and like when I was born. It's it's totally different. I mean everything it seems to be that everything the answer is, oh there's complication the C section. But right. it could be something simple. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Absolutely. But you know with the I just don't understand why they it's almost like well it's the easiest way. You don't have to yeah. wait till you know, till <laughs> that moment. Uh, you can just kind of go in when it suits you. And I, I don't know whether that's the reason that the majority do it now, but uh, I'd be, be interested to hear what other what other mammies say. But that's that's yeah. cool. So thank you for that. Anything else then, Lou? Um, no, that's everything tonight, Alan, but oh, I hope lovely. to see you again soon. I look forward to it. Thank you. And congratulations. That's a mountain you've claimed there, lass. Yes, thank you very much, Alan. No worries. Take care, Lou. Bye. Thank you. Bye. How about that? Her massive fear is, of course... To uh, get back to work, suffering for... And um, people who criticise those that, that suffer anxiety have obviously never had it. It's something that just stops you in your tracks and you, you literally feel you can't go on, you can't move on. And you end up kind of sticking to the house and not going out and you don't want to talk to anyone. Horrible thing. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. I gather I upset a whole batch of people last week. Uh, or at least one who was loud about it. Um, when I was talking about people who are who claim to be disabled, but they walk, they've got a walking stick and they walk on the wrong leg, or they walk with a stick like they can hardly walk at all, and then after a couple of minutes, the, the stick's under their arm and they're walking normally again. It, I, somebody said on, online that I was having a go with disabled people. No, I'm not. I'm having a go with fake disabled people, and there's a difference. 0191 488 Got Brian next. He is also in South Shields. Hi, Brian. Hello, Alan. You all right? Brian? I'm good, man. What can I do for you? Um, it's just, um, I just want to talk about the punk scene and uh, the band I'm in at the moment. Um, Tell me more. I was, well, the band called The Forbes from South Shields um, were at um, Keith Newman's place last week. Uh huh. Um, and he was just, you know, they played a few tracks and Ask her, you know, how it was going. Right. Um, and he actually put us on. He says, well, because we've got a song called Double Eight Three One Double Eight, which was written about Metro Radio when James right. Whale was the host. Oh, right, yes. And he loved the song. And he says, why don't you, you know, have a bit crap while and Robson about it? And, yeah, uh, definitely. So I thought, well, why not? <laughs> <laughs> so that must have been donkeys years ago you wrote it that. Was. It's going to be 20, 30 years ago. Basically, 
yeah, I was round about 90, late 1977, uh, 78. Blimey, right. And um, <laughs> the band that were in it, were, I was in a band by the Angelic Upstarts, which is, that's still going. You yeah, know what I mean? absolutely, yeah. Um, actually, the song was written for them. Right. Um, at the time when we were in the band, but um, the song was never played. So the, when we left the Upstarts, we played one gig with them, mm -hmm. me and a couple of lads, and we formed the fold, and we decided to take the song on myself. Great. Which was obviously about Metro Radio, and at the time, uh, James Whale was the host, mm -hmm. and it was just like, then you could say anything on the show, because I don't think there was a delay system on it. Right. Uh -huh. So people used to phone in, and... Yeah. They used to swear at them and all that, you know, and mm -hmm. I remember listening to it and thinking, this is <laughs> it's unreal, this. Yeah, sure. And there was a lot of people, they used to phone up and, you know, they were depressed and saying that they were going to commit suicide and James Will would, like, you know, try and help them out and things like that. So sure. we decided to write a song about it. That's good. Which so, we've, so recorded, great. we've recorded again now. Uh -huh. um, and it's, you know, a lot of people like it, so... That's good stuff. So, where are you playing next then, so people can come and see you? Um, we haven't got it. We've got a few gigs lined up, but um, the only one that's con well, we've got like about five or six lined up. But um, there's a one in May, which is at the Ivy House in Sunderland. Right. We've got a gig at um, Trillions. All right. Uh -huh. In June. Uh huh. Um, so just keep it only open for you, and then yeah, you can... we've got a they've got a couple of gigs soon, but. You know, they haven't been confirmed, so I don't really want to say nothing until that's sure. confirmed type of thing, you know. But, um, you know, we're looking, we're looking forward to, um, because, you know, we're getting on a bit now, you know what I mean? We've been around a while. Um, the band originally, like I said, was formed around about 77, 78. Um, we split up in about 82. Um, one of a few bands after that then would we'll basically give it up and right. about 2016 uh, the old drummer bumped into him had a bit crack and says do you fancy giving it another bash I says why not and I, yeah well this is the thing though if you've got a passion for it why stop that's it that's it dive back in and do but it, it again. it's the punk scene now is, uh -huh. it's, it's getting massive again uh -huh. you're talking like you know you've got Rebellion and um, Blackpool around about the August time, and it's absolutely heaving, you know what I mean? All the, you see all the old punks getting back together in their 50s and 60s, and it's, it's amazing. It's, it's a great thing, you know, to see all these people getting back together. It's all coming together again. It's funny because uh, punk's one of those things that, at the time, a lot of people who could hardly play just, well, got, up, just got up and had a bash, and they realised that they could make something yeah. that, that was mm -hmm. loosely music, and some of them learnt... While they went and became household names over that mm -hmm. that period of time, and I, I loved the punk scene. I thought it was, I thought it was fabulous. At the time, they were kind of against us because we were the hairy boys, and there was punks, and they didn't get on with the hairies too much. But the music was very similar, you know. There was, mm -hmm. It came from the same root, and you could tell. Well, that was it. Um, like I think everybody, like up until seventy six, was. Basically into rock music, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. um, into Led Zeppelin, Sabbath and stuff like that. And when the punk scene came out, there was something different. Yes, absolutely. Um, no, I and mean, it was... it was. But to me, I, I remember... In the, everybody says that The Damned and New Rose was the very first... Yeah. Uh, the, mm -hmm. the first ever punk song. I don't know whether that's true, but... It, it I, was one of the first ones, yes. I'm, pr I'm certainly prepared to believe it. Mm -hmm. And that was one of the first songs that Guns N' Roses chose to do. Yeah. When they did an album of the bands that they were inspired by, yeah, definitely. and it, it just doesn't surprise me because rock's very, very close to to punk in everything that it does, and it's also got those little back alleys where you find bands that aren't really punk but they're uh, attached to it, like the Stranglers and the yeah. and the Clash, and you know they they're different, really different bands. Mm -hmm. I lo I love that because it, it opened a lot of doors for a lot of people. Yeah, that's right. Um, it's just getting back to that point that you made about uh, that you couldn't play. Um, mm -hmm. At the time when the punk scene had kicked off, one of my friends was basically down London at the time. Mm -hmm. And um, 
he came back up north and he says, yeah, there's something happening down there. It's going to be massive, I'm telling you, because the pistols and the clash, stand sure. all that, yeah. getting together. Um, and when he came up, you know, none of us could play. Right, no, absolutely. But it gave people an incentive to pick up a guitar mm-hmm. and say, you, you don't have to be. That you know, was it. That was a the good classic thing about guitar it. player. You could just get up there and have a go, see if it suits you, and if it does, you you start learning, you start putting yourself together, and see how far you can go. I think it, the whole scene was tremendous. Mm-hmm. It was it was good for music at the time, and yeah. uh, what it actually did in a, in a kind of roundabout way, it kicked off the new wave of British heavy metal because uh, pop, it did, aye, pop, that pop came music. Out in the 80s. Early 80s. That's right. Pop music couldn't cope with it. You know, it was like because it was everywhere, and everybody was, even bands like Blondie, who were a, a pop band, wanted to be part of it, and they were doing like punky style tunes at the time, and uh, everybody had to go along with this incredible new wave. So rock came about and tried to jump on board and managed to get away with it. And mm-hmm. If it hadn't been for punk, I'm not even sure that Iron Maiden would have had the... And they're a massive rock band now, but exactly. not sure they would have had the, the success at the time uh, had it not been for the fact that it was kind of competing with punk. Mm-hmm. Good yeah. stuff. Hey, but lovely talking to you, Brian. Thank yeah. you for coming on, man. Brilliant, Alan. We'll be watching for you. Thanks for that. And uh, a song from a uh, talk show long ago. Now, I have with me... Iloma Milkarek, and uh, she's on the line right now. Hello there. Let's try again. Oh, she's out there somewhere. Can you hear me? Oh, there you are. Yes, I can. Hello. How are you doing? I'm very good, thank you. I'm really pleased to be able to talk to you. I always listen to your show when I hey. used to do delivery. Well, that's great. You're from Casa Rosa, and you've just been I- announced as one of the, the winners in the British Takeaway Awards, which is fantastic. Yes, it is. Yes, uh, we still can't believe. To be fair, it's it's been really emotional, very exciting. So we still can't go over it. No, it's true. And when did you find out then? Well, uh, we travelled to London on a Monday morning, right. uh, and at the evening there was um, an event at the Savoy Hotel. Lovely. So I know it. It was brilliant. Uh, so well, there was a dinner, and uh, and we find out there so we didn't know before we weren't prepared and we won last time uh, last year but uh, this year the competition was really stiff so we were really really stressed and uh, yeah to be honest the best one it was just amazing no because you would imagine when when you're thinking best takeaway just purely and simply because the south's the south you'd think it would go <laughs> you would think it would go to somewhere like i don't know Sussex or Surrey or Surbiton, and yet it's Durham Road and Burnley's where it's gone. That's tremendous. Yes, we we really uh, overwhelmed really with the uh, with the award and uh, did second time in year second year, you know, in a row. That's absolutely amazing. So uh, I know uh, we've been actually flooded with the messages from uh, local people uh, first. Uh, saying that they wish us good luck now. Um, mm-hmm. Congratulations. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it's been a really intensive uh, week. Now, what's the secret then of being this great takeaway? Because uh, you know yourself that people do tend to be creatures of habit and they get used to, yeah. that's my favourite Chinese, yeah. that's my favourite Indian, yeah. that's my favourite pizza place, but with you... You don't just do pizzas, you do burgers and halloumi and all kinds of stuff. Yeah, well, um, what's the secret? <laughs> well, it's a secret, but uh, I should say that um, we try to be different, yeah. So uh, our way is uh, to be different, no ordinary takeaway. Uh, we're different and we're proud of it. Um, it's a scary at the times because we offer different food. So when we started to change the menu to upgrade the mm-hmm. uh, the dishes, uh, it was a bit scary because we were worried that we will lose some customers. Uh, some actually we, we lost on the way mm-hmm. uh, of change, but we gained awful lot of uh, new people, new customers trying it. And right. I believe that nowadays, you know, people people start um, looking for something different. Uh, I think just a pizza or just a kebab is not enough. And uh, mm. we just have to go um, above that. Sure. And I think we, we, we did it, you know. We make, uh, make that happen. So um, 
yeah, well, the award is approved, but also we we've been actually flooded with the orders over the last few months, a few years. Mm. And, and this last week was absolutely hell. It's just, yeah, it's, it's amazing. We have to actually stop taking orders. <laughs> uh, yesterday, we, we had to turn people down, you know, wow, uh, come to the because they couldn't ring, so they, they were coming in, and we had to turn them down. We just couldn't, uh, couldn't cope. So, yeah, I think I think the secret is to be different, you mm. know, to, to mm. kind of try to go with the flow with what everyone else um, offer, um, and just be a bit uh, adventurous. <laughs> no, I mean, one of my uh, team here, Tony, was telling me that he is a regular, he pops in regularly, and uh, he got, was it brie and bacon, brie, yeah. brie, brie yeah. and bacon pizza. I've never heard of such things. So. Oh, no. See, we do look. That's all, that's the secret. We do lots of the different um, offers. So mm. uh, over the Christmas, so we introduced the festive pizza. Right. But it, that was the uh, brain bacon with the chili jam pizza. I know it sounds odd. <laughs> <laughs> you know, jam and pizza, no? but it's it's beautiful uh. and it actually became that popular that we decided to keep it. Uh, we did the Christmas pizza, Christmas dinner pizza, and you would not believe. Christmas dinner pizza. I know. <laughs> you know what? We did it three, time, three years ago, I think, first time. It, you wouldn't think mm. people will actually buy it or uh, like it. It's it's beautiful. It's really nice. I know it's it's odd, but... Uh, but why not? Why not, exactly. Yeah. Uh, we have few new things coming for Easter, for Valentine's. The Easter one is especially exciting, but I can't tell you. No, it's um, Tell me a little bit about vegan, though, because you're very big with vegan stuff. You do a lot of pizzas and uh, garlic breads and nachos and cakes and all kinds. Uh, yes. Vegan yes. vegan just seems to have, have really took off over the last year or so, because yes. I can remember two years ago, if you went to a pizza, you any pizza place, you'd never find anything vegan. No, no, you couldn't. Yes, that's true. Actually, um we try to do a bit more than uh, than just serve the food. So we try to be um, in many ways um, above that. So uh, we try to be inclusive. So we try to offer different things. And now, at the moment, we can't do gluten free, but we try to do the vegan uh, options. So uh, we got started, I think, around half a year ago when I started research and uh, see if we can actually serve that in our small kitchen. Uh, so we consult a few people. We actually got in touch with some uh, vegan uh, foodies, bloggers, mm, yeah. and uh, asked for advices. And uh, we got one actually down the road who um, said, well, we are in Berkeley, I will pop over. And the lady came over and actually helped us uh, to put everything together and right. uh, give us some advices. And uh, actually, surprisingly, we, we weren't sure because it's obviously a small place, so we weren't mm. sure going to take off and if we will be able to keep it on mm. uh, after vegan worry but it's so popular i mean really there's a lot of people trying not only vegan worry but just switching to uh to meatless uh food uh so yeah it's a really uh really popular choice now and uh, we decided to keep it on yeah. we get a lot of prices for that it's apparently really nice I'm not vegan myself. I'm trying. <laughs> so I'm not quite. Uh, I can't compare it to the different uh, vegan options out no. there. But apparently, it's really good. In, so yeah. no, it's it's something that's going to be there. People are going to get used yeah. to it because it's it's yeah. here to stay. There's no question yeah. about that. Hey, but congratulations, you champion, champion for the north as well. Casa Rosa in Berkeley. Make sure that they stay completely busy for the rest of this week. Make a difference oh, in their I'm, lives. Sure. <laughs> Thank you very much for having us. Hey, no problem. Lovely talking to you. Thanks for coming on, darling. Have a good night. Cheers. Bye bye. And she's great. You can understand why she's a, a winner with that kind of attitude. 0191 488 3188. You are with the big one. What are we talking about tonight? Well, absolutely anything. We want to find out what was the most frightening, terrifying, scary thing that you have ever done. <laughs> Great bit of music. Now, <laughs> dear, Andrew Lowther sent me a little thing and he says, my new girlfriend's car got a flat tyre as we were on our way to see my parents. 
So I called up and I said, sorry, Mum, we're going to be late. My girlfriend's got a puncture. And my mother said, oh, Simon, I thought you had a real one this time. Brilliant. Well done. If you've got any gags you want to share with us, please do. 0191 488 3188. Make it happen. Alan Robson's on the Night Owls. Call Alan Robson's Night Owls now. 0191 488 3188. This is Real Life Conversation with the voice of the North. Greatest Hits Radio. And the jokes continue. If you want to text some of yours in, text the word Alan, E-L-E-N, plus your message to 61054, OK? Um, some people have already done that. And what nuts constantly seem to have a cold? What nuts <laughs> constantly seem to have a cold? Cashews. <laughs> oh, come on, that's worth one, Shelley. Oh, maybe not. Oh, dear. And we also had Glenn out there. I'm not going to send two down the net simultaneously, but he deserved it by saying, do you want to hear a joke about a pizza? I'd tell you one, but it's too cheesy. Well, that doesn't even deserve thinking about. Could to give you your first clue tonight as well? Four clues, if you can put together the word we are seeking. We're looking for a word. I'm going to give you four clues, and you're going to tell me what that word is. The first clue is this. Where farmers keep cows, sheep, and horses. Where farmers keep cows, sheep, and horses. Okay? Where farmers keep cows, sheep, and horses. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. And that's what you're thinking. Three more clues to come, and we have Danielle in State Court. But just before that, I've got to go across to some of the mail that we got because Sue is upset. She sent the thing in. I just have to put this right before it. Uh, it's sometimes those warriors behind a, a keyboard uh, do your head in, really, because they don't listen to what people actually say. They hear what they want to hear, and that's exactly what happened. Sue says, I'll still be listening, and I hope you're able to get a five-night-a-week slot. Thank you. However, I don't think I will be calling in for a while. I've had some really horrible week, and it's been upsetting. After the phone call last week, somebody on the Night Owls Friends group said that they didn't like the call and said that myself and you were laughing about people with disabilities. It's not true. I've listened back to the call, and it still isn't true. I don't care about myself, but it's slander, and I hope that no one takes any notice and tries to ruin your reputation. Hey, so people have tried for years to do that. Don't worry about it. I did say to this person to phone in and express their feelings to you, but I don't think they'll do that. No, because I'd put them right. Anyway, thanks, Alan. That's Sue from Washington. Sue, don't be daft. We were laughing at the people at the fakers. That's who we were laughing at. But anyway, do not worry, crack on. And if that person who took umbrage at it wants to actually listen to the call, they'll realise that uh, there, there is a thing in the world called fun and we were having it. Danielle, stay oh, that We were there to the place in Bellingham. I remember it well. Hello, Danielle. Hello, how are you doing? I'm good, thank you. You? Excellent. Tell me about the B&B then. Is it, is it open yet? Yeah, we open on the 4th of January. Oh, that's fantastic. <laughs> Congratulations. How's it going? Good, yeah, good. Great. Because <laughs> the last time we were there, it was in literally in bits. Yes, it was. Had a lot of work done since then and it's all finished now. No, I bet. I felt sorry for your dad. <laughs> yeah, he had, had his uh, hard job for him, but he's all done. <laughs> no, I bet it looks gorgeous as well. And as for position... You can't get a better position in the in the village than that, can you? It's, no, it's ideal, yeah. It's right in the in the centre where where all the business is. Tremendous. Mm -hmm. No, we had a lot of fun there as well. Have you had anything since? Um. Well, my husband, who's the head chef, he pretty much stays there every night. Oh. Right. Um. So he's had a few little goings on. <laughs> yeah, like like what what kind of things he experienced. Um, so he stays in the upstairs room and he's heard sort of running across the landing. Right. And then had a look and there's been no one there. And right. then we've got some emergency lights on the landing which only get tripped um, if the electric trips or in the case of a fire. 
Right. Um, and that came on by itself. So he was searching around trying to figure out what was wrong. Yeah. And then he went back up and had gone off and the other side of the building had come on instead. Almost um, like something was moving through the building. Uh, yeah, some energy uh-huh. moving through the building. Wow. So, yeah, the only way to come on is if it's like, like I say, like if it's trips or like the power surge or something. So, yeah. And then uh, his door handle on his bedroom door has moved a few times as if someone was trying to open the door. Right. Um, she was. Yeah, and my dad was doing some work in the morgue um, just the other week. So he's converted it into a bike storage. And he said that there was a dark shadow behind him twice. He kept looking and there was no one there. Wow. I, I love that. Oh, he was in the morgue. Whoa, yeah. hang on a second. <laughs> <laughs> but as a and b I'm presuming at some point, some punter's going to say, is there anybody yeah. actually... I thought I saw her. You know, you, you're going to get a little bit of that over the years, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> That's yeah. great. I know, I, I couldn't be happier. And presumably, the this will be your first proper year at it then. Yeah, so like I said, we opened on the 4th of January. We had like an opening event. Great. Um, and we've been open ever since then, seven days a week. That's um, great. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, as, a, as a B&B... Is busy. I just can't think there could be much business in January. Uh, the B and B side of it, we have had quite a few bookings. Um, yeah. for, obviously, for later in the year as well, I've got some people coming over from from California as well. Cool. Um, so they book, and we've got a Valentine's special weekend coming up where we're doing yeah. dinner, bed, and breakfast deals as well. Brilliant. Um, so they're they're quite popular as well at the minute. No, you're yeah. doing. You are absolutely doing a. Doing it right and yeah. getting the getting the word around and making sure that the, the even the locals know where to go if they if they want to mm-hmm. bite to eat or anything. That's, it's great. I couldn't yeah. be happier. Give me love to the family, Danielle, and thank you so much. Great to hear from you. I will do. Thank you very much, darling. Thanks, darling. You take yeah. care. Bye bye. No, we went across there uh, when it was literally in bits because when you're moving stuff around, that's the time when stuff shows itself. We caught stuff on camera. We caught stuff on on tape as well. Talking about the most terrified I have ever been. Mm. Harvey enters the fray. Alan, you want to know about the most terrifying experience that the Night Elves have ever had? Here's mine. In 1980, I decided (laughs) that I wanted to try sport parachute jumping. Could (laughs) Yeah. Could a long story short, my parachute opened, but all of my lines were tangled. The wind was also blowing me away from the airfield towards a busy main road. My life was flashing before me, and I honestly thought that my life on this earth was coming to a grisly end. My heart was beating at a million beats a minute, and as I saw the ground getting nearer and nearer, I braced myself and thought the worst. The next thing I know, I was lying on my back in a farmer's field, I looked up to see a female figure standing over me, an angel, perhaps. Sadly, no, she was a farmer. She told me off for landing in a field, (laughs) but fortunately, I lived to tell the tale. Just very bruised pride. Yours, Harvey. Amazing. Amazing. Great story, man. Thank you for that. What's the most terrified you have ever been? What did you do? Where did you go and why? We need to know all these things. But... I'm heading across to one of my favourite places in all of planet Earth, and that is near Paris in France. Chris is there. Hi, Chris. Hello, Alan. Hey. Nice to speak to you. Great it's to been talk a long to time. you. I know. Hey, great to catch up with you. Excellent. How long have you lived there? I've lived here on and off since 1994. Wow. And uh, I've come back to the northeast a few times, come back here a few times, worked in Spain, worked in Brazil, uh-huh. and uh, now I'm still working here. So I get a bit too long in the tooth to keep moving around the place. But I uh, missed the northeast, and uh, sure. when I heard you were still so back, I should say, well. on the radio, I thought, hey, I must get, uh, must give you a call. Hoorah! So it's been a well. few years. It, it used to be Chris from Heaton, but uh, <laughs> it's now Chris from a little town called Brazil which is just outside Paris. Is it nice? It's very nice, yes, yes. I mean, uh, you know, um, it's nice to be a little way out the city. It's sure. a sort of uh, distance-wise. It's like, you know, half an hour on a local train. Right. And, um, yes, you know, Paris isn't as sort of huge as London. There's not so many people. And, mm. 
you know, it's uh, it's there are certainly worse places in the world to live. No, but, my but, goodness. Uh, I do miss the northeast. I, I have to say that, but um, you know, I like France as well. So uh, no, absolutely, you know. I completely agree. And the thing is, ever since I started learning the language, and you actually talk to French because everybody says, "Oh, they don't like the British," and they they've got a <laughs> snooty regard, and all, and they do sometimes have a bit of a snooty regard. But if you start to talk their language, they they kind of sh- show a little bit more respect for you. Exactly, and, and off you go because you're you're meeting them halfway. It's kind of like if they came to Britain and only spoke French. Well, what kind yes. of response would we give you? It's it's exactly that thing. But exactly. I, I I have to say you've got one thing in Paris that I've not seen anywhere else. It, and you know we're talking we've been talking a little bit fast foody tonight on the show. Uh, yes. I, what I like to do is if I if I go to Paris is just to get on a tube and head off and go to somewhere I've never been, go to a station I haven't been, like, 20 stops away, just to have a look around because there's there's all kinds of stuff in all directions. And I found this tiny little street, can't even tell you where it is, but it was about eight, eight nine stops outside of Paris, and um, walked along, and I could smell this food, and it, it filled the whole street. And when I got about halfway up, it was uh, an old-fashioned, the, the kind that, that we all used to have in the north on a, on every high street. You know, your old-fashioned butcher. It's not Tesco. It's, it's, oh, you know, it's none of them. It's a proper little butcher who does all these little treats every day that people come in for. That's it. And That's the good old days. And, <laughs> and they're cooking stuff. They're not, you know, they're not just they're not just putting it out there like a road accident. They're they're actually cooking the stuff. And in just outside the shop, they had a glass case, and they had probably twenty chickens just rotating on on those like spitty things. Yes. And in the bottom of it, and you you know this better than anybody else, but in the bottom where they're cooking the the chickens. All the fats dripping down onto potatoes, with <laughs> with onions and and peppers and stuff in the bottom part, and when you buy your chicken, he says, "Would you like some potatoes?" He scoops the potatoes. You've got a full meal when you get home. You've got a exactly. You've got a red hot, and I mean, red hot steaming, um, right off the grill chicken, smell, exactly. smelling beautiful. You get your hey. all your extras yeah. as well. Amazing. Yeah. You're making me hungry, even at this time of night. <laughs> I know. Uh, it's going to be trouble. I'm going to be eating before I go to bed. But, but no, it's just because to me, I think that's that's simple. That it's, yes. it's not even it's not even clever marketing. It's like make somebody smell something. It smells exactly. so good. You're gonna you're gonna you're gonna sell them, aren't you? I mean, that's exactly. That's how, you, you, it, you can still eat well and inexpensively in yeah. Paris. I have to say, you have to know where you need where you want to go. But um, you know, I, I hear some people say, "Oh, I had a meal in London. It cost me like ninety quid." And I'm like, God, <laughs> why? You just don't need to pay that sort of money. No, I mean, no. you can have a very nice meal here for you know a tenner, even, even today. And the funny you know thing is, I, even even you like your your supermarkety things, you got a thing called Monopri. Yes, Monoprix. The the Monoprix stores they've got a little counter that does hot pizzas and hot chicken and chicken wings and chicken legs and chicken bits and bits and bobs. So there's there's plenty of option for you to to eat cheaply. And uh, I was just quite sure if you eat on the Champs Elysees, you're going to get stung. But if you mm. eat, if you eat anywhere else, it's actually really really incredibly reasonable. Explain to me though the the I don't know Brexit is is kind of new. <laughs> We haven't really we haven't really done anything. We've just talked up to this yeah. point, but everybody's um, we the thing donged and everybody who wanted it is happy hooray. Uh, have you heard of any way it's going to affect you? Uh, it w- might well affect me. I, I have to apply. What I had a, a many years ago was a residence permit, right. which has expired. And eventually, they said, "Oh, you don't need one anymore." This is going back ten years or so. And yeah. they said, well, "You know, you don't need it." Now I do have to apply for one, and to make things easier, to make sure that there are no problems down the road for me, although I've been here for such a long time, yeah. um, I will probably end up taking out French nationality. Oh, blame. which is something that I thought well I'd never do not because I don't feel French enough or it's just as time goes by I've been here that much 
you know, I've been here yeah. half my life pretty much. Yeah. Um, it's just that it will make things easier. There, there are going to be a lot of problems. There are going to be particularly problems for elderly British people in Spain mm. because unlike France, where there's no problem having double nationality, mm-hmm. you cannot acquire Spanish nationality and keep your British nationality. Oh, right, I see. So you're going to have to uh, possibly relinquish um, what you've already got. And, of course, if if people do that, let's say the age of 60 or so, to make sure they can have their full um, health rights in Spain, that will be okay for a few years becoming Spanish. But, of course, when you get to 80 or so Mm. and you think, oh, I'd rather go back and live with my son or my daughter back in wherever in in Mm. Britain... Mm. Um, you'll then face with a choice of having to come back to Britain as a Spaniard. So this is a very strange situation. (laughs) Now, my my son is in a slightly different situation. He was born in France, says he's French. Uh His mother has a Spanish passport, although she was born in South America. You can do that between South America and Spain. There's no problem because of the language side of things. So you can acquire at birth as he has had, the right to have a British passport through me and a Spanish one through his mother. Right. But what you gotcha. cannot do is go to Spain as an adult, or, you know, so, well, I, I say an adult just to simplify the argument, and, and then say, OK, I'd like a Spanish passport. The, French, the, the Spanish will then say, OK, you can have one in due course, but you've got to relinquish what you've got. And I've actually found that I have a Spanish colleague at work who was in an even more ridiculous situation, and and I can't believe this is the case, but he he assures me it is. Mm. He has acquired... uh, He's got a... So he's Spanish, he's living in Paris, his wife's French. He has acquired French nationality, and now the Spanish are telling him he's got to relinquish his own nationality, i.e. Spanish. And that, to me, is ridiculous. There, there are lots of things. This is obviously not related to Brexit because, no. of course, you know, you're talking about France and Spain. Sure. But there are a lot of very strange things going on. And there are the, the unfortunate thing about Brexit is that um, everybody's kind of scratching away and tr- mm. trying to sort of find negative things. And, mm. oh, well, you're from there. And you have, have you lived here long enough? And who are you? And are you trying to take money out of the system? There's a British guy, actually, who lives a couple of hours south of here. He's lived here for for, for as long as I have, mm. and they've turned down his application for French citizenship on the grounds of him not having a sufficiently high wage. Oh, blame me. So there are oh. strange things going on, and the unfortunate thing, as I say with Brexit, it, it's kind of... It, it, this wasn't maybe the idea of it, even for leavers, and I'm, I'm personally, I'm, I call myself a reluctant Remainer. Mm. There are things I don't like about the EU, but mm. I think that... Uh, there are too many problems which people haven't thought about um, that are coming to the surface now, mm. and we we don't know where it's going. You know that people mm. are. I mean, I appreciate not everybody's in the situation that I'm in. I've moved around. I've gone here. I've gone there. Mm. But you know, if you say you're British, you go to France, and then you get transferred, let's say, to Germany, that's going to be a problem because people sure. will say, if you've been in whichever country for five years which in my case, in the French case, is, is the case, nah. that's no problem. But I have a, a friend here, he's British, he gets posted every so often to Holland and to Germany. And they're going to say, well, you know, can you come to this third country? Have you lived here for five years? No, I've lived in France for five years. Oh, well, that might be a problem. So we really don't know where things are going. So... Um, I don't know. When when you just stay in in, mm. in your home country, it, it's it's less complex. But, sure. uh, it makes it I'm not sound too sure that, where things are going. It makes it sound though that you've got a, a very sexy job, a bit like a spy. <laughs> well, I, I I'll, I'll come clean. I'm I'm a journalist. I, I work for a, for a news agency. And I sort of move around the place right. quite a lot. So it's a, and now our our main topics at the moment. Well, if I take it, I mean, I actually worked earlier on today. Our main topics this week are Brexit this terrible virus in yeah. China, and again, Lord knows how, where that's going to end up. Have you got any in France know. Any in France yet? There are six declared cases as far as I know. Right, right. So, and it's spreading, and, you know, people are talking about vaccines. Mm. There's a vaccine being uh, researched, I know, in Paris and I think in Australia as well. Right. But, uh, you know, where does it go? You, you can't 
you you can't know exactly where everybody's been. You can't lock no, down sure. every single individual in in every country. And of course, there's a couple of people up in in the RVI, aren't there, at the moment? That's so right. uh, who are being treated? So it's yeah, just that's, typical, that's one of those typical the difference, of those issues. Difference though between France and Britain, you've got. Chris, this is Chris reporting from Paris, and uh, we've got <laughs> we've got scientists working on this right now in Britain. Try Dettol. Everybody's saying try Dettol. We're not sure it'll work, but we think it will. Dettol, yeah. use Dettol. So, <laughs> well, <laughs> massive difference in the kind of publicity that this damn thing is getting. But we're also hearing that in China, bird flu is broken out as well. Well, yes, yes, and again, you see, because it's such a huge place, and you know. You know, obviously it's modernised a lot over the last 20, 30 years or so, but of course there are places in, in, in many other countries, you know, Britain as well has got its rural mm. areas. I, I lived through mad cow disease and all the other sure. kind of stuff. Yeah. And I came home once, coming up to Newcastle on the train, and saying to everybody, where, where are all the animals? Where, where are the sheep? Where are the cows? Mm. Oh, you know, they've all been killed. Oh, my gosh, what's going on? So, you know, it, it's very, very difficult to... In, to well, I mean, it's impossible to be absolutely 100% sure that no disease mm. will slip through the net in any given country at any given time. We just don't know. So no, no, sure. where does it go? I, I really don't know. I've got uh, a guy called Ian here with two eyes, probably in his head, but two also in his name, who says um, that he wants to move to France. Is that is that a goer now, or, or have, have they, are they going to give yes. us a de Gaulle's no? Well, uh, I would strongly advise, if he's serious about it, I would make sure he tries to get it all his ducks in a line, so to speak, administratively speaking, and make sure he does it this year, because for all this... Again, one of the reasons I was opposed to it, now, as I say, I am a reluctant Remainer. Yeah. Um, you don't know exactly what's going to happen. They so no deal, we, we want no deal off the table. But you, you, no deal's not off the table mm. until you've got a deal. Sure. What is the deal? We don't know. Mm. We've now left, but we don't know exactly what will happen at the end of this year. So if he wants to do it, get all your admin sorted out now because, you know, it, it's much easier when you're already here. Sure. One of the things I'm worried about is that, from what people say, it could theoretically be difficult to go back, right. depending on where right. you're coming from and where you're going back to, and mm. what about your your family? I mean, I've had this in the past that my my wife is, as I say, from South America. Mm. Um, it was a business, you know, getting married in England. You know, does she want to stay here? I said, no, 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 no. We don't live in England. We're going back to France. We just want to come over, have a holiday, get married go back to France. There are lots of, you know, all, all this kind of debate has thrown up lots of negatives, mm. you know, try, mm. trying to find an excuse. We don't want this person here. We're not too sure about them. We're suspicious. Mm. You know, I, I would say to, to the, what, what was the name again? Sorry, Ian, you know, if, no. if you want to do it and you're serious about it, no, so try true. and do it now because where we will be after this so-called transition period, I honestly do not know. I mm. do not know. I've got pages and pages and pages of, of papers at home saying, how do I apply for the residence permit, which is a new a new system of the residence yeah. permit, not the same as the old one. Then there's a separate issue. What about whether you want a passport? They want your parents' birth certificates. They want oh, all kinds of things. Me. It's all got to be translated. It's got to be paid for. Yeah. You know, I, I, they're even asking me, and I have a degree in French from Newcastle, I might add. Well done. And I've lived here, you know, I've, I've had 25 years with this company, so obviously I speak French. Sure. And they're saying to me, you've got to do a language test. Oh. And I'm like, really? Sure. You know? Wow. <laughs> so, and, of course, what does it cost? Oh, 100 euros or so. You know, it all mounts up. Sure. It all mounts up. And it's, it's, it's a big pain administratively. And as I say, you know... I think you were alluding to, you know, whether whether the French are sort of happy to see us gone or not. And to be honest, I think everybody was sad that mm. it actually happened. But mm. the way it's gone on and the way it took so long, there's a lot of evident, a lot of a sort of element of good riddance about it as well. Right. No, I can understand. Unfortunately, I can understand. I'm very sad to have to say that, but um, that is the way a lot of people look at it. They, they always felt we were never quite on board. And mm. it's like, if you want to go, okay. Go, <laughs> and it's a great shame because there's only—I've always said there's only three countries in the EU 
whoever had enough clout mm. to influence what path we were going down. Yeah. And one of those three was Britain. Sure. And if France and Germany sort of get in a disagreement and everything stalls and we're off the pitch, so to speak, mm. you know, where does it go? Can I, can I just say one very, very, very quick thing? Sure. Um, I've always thought about this, sort of looking at this whole European argument. Imagine that you live in a decent house at the top of a street mm -hmm. and you've got a really nice tree, an oak tree, for example. Mm -hmm. And you say, oh, I really like this oak tree, you know, or one of the reasons I've got my house. And yet the way the sun shines down the rest of the street, your neighbor's gardens are always in the sh or often in the shade because mm. of your tree. Uh -huh. Now, you as the individual say, well, this is my house. This mm -hmm. is my tree. I want my oak tree. Yeah. But when you know, if you're a community-minded person, and this is one of the reasons I wanted to come back in touch with you, because, uh, you know, the, the community feeling of the northeast mm -hmm. is much better than it is elsewhere and, and i certainly include sure. paris in that sure. and and it means you know what what your neighbors are doing and how they're getting on is a is a source of concern to people you mm -hmm. know they, they want to know how, how are you doing mate you know i haven't seen you for a bit what, what you've been up to and that's a good thing imagine it if you've got to make the choice is it my tree or am i going to just say no i want to put you all in the shade and i don't care mm -hmm. Now, I would try to say, and I hope most people would say, at the end of the day, it's got to be the greatest good for the greatest number. Right, yeah. yeah. And it's a bit like that, you know, it's like, well, we want to do this. Well, yes, but, you know, if, if you sort of spoil everything for everybody else because of what you've done for you as an individual, it just doesn't seem to be the right choice. And I, I think, unfortunately, that's what we've done. Mm -hmm. And um, it's one of those things that I, I'm not sure we can go back on. Well, it's, it's one of those but, where, um, where time will tell. Hey, Chris, I'd love to to keep this going. If you want to uh, ring up again, I'll, I'll I'm, I'm looking... it. I, can I, I just want to say very, very quickly, I'm, I'm very pleased to hear you're, you're on the air. Thanks, and I, remember, I was just going to say that, you know, years and years and years ago, I mean, I, I grew up in the Midlands, actually. I was born right. in Newcastle. I came back up to study, missed mm -hmm. the place come back as often as I can. Yeah. And all through the years, you know, you'd listen to a bit of music at 10 o'clock, 11 o'clock, you'd have your callers starting. And mm. there were, you know, people would talk about all sorts of things, funny things, jokes, crazy things, silly things. Yeah. And then people would come on and start highlighting important issues which affect people. And sure. radio, you know, I, I, I'm a radio journalist originally. I work right. in the press now and I miss radio. Radio is very important. And what you do and what you have done, Alan, for a long, for all these last 30, 40 years or so, is important. So I hope you right, keep it going. You. And one of these days, you know, okay, you're, you're a, I'm, I'm getting on and you're, you're a few years further down the road from me. But uh, hopefully, you know, there'll be a successor coming in one day. But keep it going. Absolutely. Keep it going. We'll do so our damnedest. I'm going to give way to all your other callers, but keep it going. And I'm very pleased that it is still going. And, I, as you know, as you always say to everybody else, God bless and I wish you well. That's charming. And to your colleagues as well. Let's talk again, Chris. Thank you very much. Appreciate Will it. Will do, Alan. Cheers, Thank man. you very much. Bye-bye. Bye. Oh, we got a new friend in Paris. That's pretty cool. 0191 double eight. In a second, we've got a, a fast food story coming up. From Thomas in Middlesbrough, but that's immediately after this. This is the home of Alan Robson's Night Owls. With the voice of the North. Greatest hits radio. And we have Thomas, who is in the borough. Hello, Thomas. How are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you guys? I'm great. Thank you kindly. Thanks for ringing in. You're one of our fast food heroes, I gather. Yeah, you could say that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you're, you're the one that brings it to the door. That's that's as important as it gets. you got a story for us, I gather. What's the crack? I do, yes. Well, what happened was um, I was I, I, I deliver uh, for a living, and uh, during the day I thought I'd go out, and I was I was out and about on the on the bike, mm -hmm. and I, dro I get to KFC or I, I goes and drops it off. It's just normal standard mm -hmm. day for me, and knocks on the door. Gives, gives the customer their KFC. Wonderful. And then I get on my bike. Just as I'm about to go, um, she goes to the door. She's all happy with the food. Yeah. And I put my earbuds in. So I can listen to my sat-nav again. <laughs> right. As I'm pulling off, I'm halfway down the street by this point. 
she she she's she's shouting, Come back, come back and I'm thinking <laughs> Oh, there's, there's there's something wrong here. I'm gonna have to uh this yeah. is this is gonna be interesting. Right. Um because once <laughs> we no longer have the food, it's no longer our responsibility with us being a third party company to well, Right, of course. Yeah, so, understood. Yeah. So I'll what I'll do is is I'll turn around, I'll see what's up and I'll point her in the right direction as right. what she needs to do. Gotcha. So turns back round and uh, pulls back up and trying, oh, here, here, here's your tip, that's yours. I'm like, oh, thank you very much. She, right. uh, it was nice to be actually called back. Yeah, yeah, I was down the street. Even though it was a small one-pound tip, it, it was something. No, absolutely, um, that that's nice, and I'm glad she did that because a lot of people would have said, oh, I've missed them, I'll catch them next time or whatever. And it, yeah. would, it wouldn't be you, it would be the next guy, whoever. But, yeah. uh, no, it was nice that she did that. That does, does make a difference. It does. It does. It goes a <laughs> long way. Do you get a tip every time, or, or, or is it? does it depend? For me, it, it, it's quite rare that I come across areas where I'm going to get a tip. There's, there's, there's areas you go to, you know, that you, that you can just... I've learned you can generally judge where... You're getting a tip where you're not getting a tip where you might get a tip. Oh, tell me, tell me, how do you tell? How do you tell? It it it, <laughs> it all goes on the address, like and where we're going. Like if if we're going to a really nice posh area, we know we're going to get some sort of tip. Right. Um, because for some reason, are you telling nice me poor areas. poor people are tight? Is that what you're saying? Well, it's not that. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm not exactly rich myself. <laughs> right. Um, I'm not exactly rich myself, sure. and. Uh, I um, I I. I dug you into a hole. Let, let let me get you out of the hole. Some <laughs> sometimes I'm sure you've had some very nice tips off people that you wouldn't have expected to. Yeah, well, sure. I I I've had a previous instance <laughs> where I was delivering in a completely different town uh, yeah. before I moved to the borough, uh -huh. and uh, I went to not exactly the nicest area and was given a five pound tip, and oh, I was like go. amazed, right. but. So we we thing. got you into the hole. You're now out of the yep. hole. You're back yep. again. You're with us. <laughs> no, it's because the thing that I've noticed we did a we did a big charity thing uh, mm -hmm. for for cash for kids some years ago, and we decided we were going to set up a stall in two places, and yep. the the ra the people at the radio station said well, you've got to do one in Gosforth because Newcastle's Gosforth's got a lot of money, bit of cash there. Yeah. So go to Gosforth, you'll make a fortune, and I said. Well, why don't you put the other one in Scotswood? And to be honest, there's a lot of people on the bones of the, the backside in yeah. Scotswood. But I know the people because I'm from Benwell just up the road. So, and they're, they're good, decent people. And we made something like three times the amount of money from Scotswood as we did in Gosforth. And I thought, that, well, that's, that just kind of tells you. You know, the, the, yeah. the reason why a lot of people in Gosforth have money is because they're not going to give it. They're not going to give it away to anybody. But uh, uh, it's just nice to see. You, you never really know. But I, I understand what you say. There'll be certain places yeah. where you've been before, and you know, got now the last time. I'm not likely to get any any today. I, I can see how that will work. I mean, how come you don't get pursued by people on motorbikes trying to steal your pizza or steal your cash? Well. With, with us, um, with being a third-party company, we can go to KFC, pick up food, and drop it off at a customer. And then, right. say, for example, we could then get Burger King mm -hmm. straight after that. So we don't actually carry cash. That right. means going back and forth to the restaurant. Right. Only cash we carry is our own and tips. Right. Um, that's but that's you, do, you do get people come on, like, come on past going, oh, that smells nice, and <laughs> oh, give us a bite. And I'm just like sitting there thinking, well... <laughs> I've got I've got my earbuds in, so I'll just pretend I'm not here. Yeah, you. yeah, yeah. I can imagine it's not going to go down well if you open every pizza box and there's just a big bite-sized chunk out the corner. Uh, that's not going to yeah. work. It's not going to work for you. And, and with uh, um, with us working on Sundays as well, which is quite a lucrative day to be honest. I bet. Um, yeah, I bet. especially for um, stuff like your your, your roasts, mm. they're they're quite popular. Um, Where can you go day. for a delivery roast? Pardon my ignorance here, but I didn't even um, know you could do that. Yeah, well, I, there's there's a couple of places I I know of in just just in my town alone in in, in, in Middlesbrough. In Middlesbrough yeah. There's a company called the Hot Roast Company, right? Um, which do lovely roast, and they deliver. Oh, oh through yep. you they deliver. Okay. They deliver through us, and on a Sunday they even put their own drivers on for like. 
so they can take phone calls or wow. rather than just ordering through Amazing. through the uh, just the app. Right. Um, which is hey, good. Can um, I just say, Middlesbrough, you're ahead of the game here, Borough. Well done. Because yeah, I, I don't, I don't. There may well be one on West Side and one on Tyne Side, but I certainly uh, don't know about this this Sunday yeah. roast thing. That's I, brilliant. I know certain Toby Carveries do deliver. Uh huh. Um, which is where where I spend most of my Sundays in and out of. Right. Um, unlike today, has been pretty awful. <laughs> <laughs> um, not not on, not on the not on the amount of job side of things. More on the amount of like how many of the us that were out because with our we with us we work through a separate company and mm. they give us extra um, incentives. Sure. And um, like a multiplier, so. On a bicycle, we get 1.4 um, times the, the four pound delivery fee, which is pretty amazing. Right, no, that's um, good. And, I mean, and, ha- and, has this whole just eat thing? Because it's become a phenomenon. Everybody, everybody does the every here just eat. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everybody, everybody has been that's doing that. For... To a restaurant. That's what I say to them sometimes. <laughs> First thing in the morning, after I, after I switch off one delivery app, I go on to the new other delivery yeah, app. Now. I, I walk into it to, to like KFC or somewhere. Did somebody ju- say just eat in the staff that know me? They're like, just go away. I'm like, <laughs> all right. <then."> yeah, <laughs> this is this is only the thousandth time today we've heard that. I can imagine. Yeah. <laughs> no, that's great. Hey, well, lovely talking to you, Thomas. Absolute respect for what you do. Thanks for keeping us fed. Really appreciate that. No problems. I mean, there has been times where people have tried to steal a, mm. a bicycle, which ah, is right. quite fun. <laughs> you, you get stories like, "Oh, I've left my key in the house," or <laughs> "The bike was here." I, there was one week I was I was off, and ah. um, I went in on on the on the Thursday, and I'd been off for, for like a couple of weeks, and I thought I'll go in and I'll make some money, and um, chain my bike up. Ah. As I come out with the delivery, they're like. Oh, this bike's been here for a week. We thought the person got arrested and oh, the bike was yeah, there yeah, again. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, it's actually my bike and I've come in today. I've not been in for two weeks. Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, the, the bike's been in the house. I tell you, there's any chance to get... Stay safe, Thomas. Lovely talking to you, man. Do. Thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers, man. Bye bye. Hey, well done, Borough. Delivering Sunday dinners with Yorkshire puddings and everything? Oh, I think so. Tony, trusty taxi driver, says... We find in the taxi trade, the richer the area, the less likely you are to get a tip. The West End is way better for tips than Darris Hall. There you go. Hope that's not just uh, just Shearer. Anyway, 0191 488 3188. Pick up your telephone, give us a call. We'd love to hear from you. Time Fleetwood match, man, this stuff. Don't forget your one clue in. You are three more clues. You get your second clue in about 10, 15 minutes. Get ready for that. Promised you, Alison from Anfield Plain, and here is the lady herself. Hello, Alison. Hi there, Alan. How are you doing? I'm very well. Thank you kindly for your call. What you got for us tonight, then? It was just when you put up earlier on Facebook about scary things and being frightened. Yeah. So I thought I'd finally ring up and tell you the story about the cottage that we lived in. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> Do tell. Where was it? Yeah, It was in um, Biddenham, down right. near um, Bedford. Right. So we were, da- we were living down there for a couple of years, so we were just renting, and we found this beautiful little cottage. Mm. And it was, I'll put a picture online, it was after. Ah, Absolutely, it was chocolate box. It was beautiful. Right. So my husband always wanted to live in a thatched cottage, so we said, right, we'll have this one. Wow. And it, like, we should have really known the day we moved in because they showed us around and everything, and they said that there was a guy renting the cottage, um, and he was going to come in, move all of his stuff. He was travelling and things like that. Right. So we were like, oh, yeah, yeah, fair enough. So the day we moved in, there was still an era up with shirts on. There was still food in the cupboard. Oh, no. There was still clothes in the wardrobe. Oh. Um, and we just thought, it's just rather strange. <laughs> Bagged it all up and thought, it's a bit weird. Yeah, um, yeah, absolutely. But it was it was a beautiful, it, it had a lovely feeling because it was kind of like the, because it was so old, mm. the walls were all curved. So nothing was, nothing was smooth. It was all just wooden beams, and it was like the the horsehair kind of walls right. between the beams. Yeah, yeah. So it was lovely. So 
literally the first night we got there, we moved in, and it was one of those places where you held your hand once you switched the light off. You held your hand in front of your face. You could not Pitch see. Pitch black. Yeah, no light. No, it no, no light from streets and that kind of stuff. Right. Absolutely nothing. Yeah. So we're lying in bed the, the first night, and it, it was a fully furnished flat. So it was every, all their furniture and every uh, house, all their furniture and things in. Right. Lying in bed, and we hear creak, creak, creak. So that's a bit strange. Yeah. But it was a thatched roof, so you think, right, there's got to be wildlife and things running around. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, it, the doors, it was really strange because up, to get up the stairs was five steps, and it was like a twist. So it was like five higgledy piggledy sized right. steps to get yeah. from downstairs to upstairs. Uh-huh. So we hear this creaking, and then the catches on the doors were like um, like what you get on like a a gate where you press it down and yeah, the, like old, the, the old fashioned clattery, yeah. clattery rattly ones. Yeah. So we're lying in bed and we hear click click. And we kind of, I grab, I put my hand out to the side and grab Rob's hand and think, <laughs> oh my God. Then we hear the door open fully. Oh, what? And we kind of lie there thinking, right, let's, we need a phone here. We need to get something yeah. like open for about 30 seconds. And then it closed, went click, click, and fastened again. Oh, and it was like, good grief. Oh, and you, my. I would imagine those few seconds, the two of you were like, <laughs> And just held, yes. I can imagine. <laughs> wow. It was just kind of like, oh, what's happening? And when so you woke up in the morning, of... your telly was still there, was it? Yeah, everything <laughs> was still there. But, <laughs> but it, things started happening over, like, periods of time, and we got quite friendly. I know this sounds really mad. You'll think we're crazy. <laughs> we got quite friendly with whoever was haunting the place. <laughs> how? How, how, would you, um, how did you get to be that then? Well, we both saw things. So the, right. about two or three weeks later, I was in the dining room and mm. I was there on my own. Right. And the kitchen was an extension, so that was kind of like a little offshoot that had been put on mm. at a later time. Right. And I saw and the doors. I'm only five foot three, five foot four, and I had to duck to get through the doors, so the doors were <laughs> tiny. Right. And we was I was stood there and I just turned around and there was a what looked like a little old woman and a little old man, but they only looked about four foot tall, peering round the door. Right. And it was just a split second. It was just, just what I saw them as clear as day as if they were actually there. Right. So we started kind of doing the things and there was one night we were sat watching the telly and um my husband's kids had been there that day and they'd had the Lego out. Right. So we're just sitting and there was a pile of kind of Lego that was like half put away in this like corner of the room. Mm-hmm. And one piece of Lego started rolling across the floor. Oh, lovely. Right. And it was like, oh, wow, ah. this is amazing. And then we started getting really curious with it and started asking questions. And it was it was like most haunted, like, oh, Great. <laughs> you should have been there. It would have been brilliant. I would have um, loved it, absolutely. But we got, um, we ended up, we had like a, on, next to the big fire, because it was a big like Ingle Nook fire. Mm-hmm. So we had like the, 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 I can't remember what it's called, like the poker and the. Oh yeah, 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 your little, yeah, yeah, like, all the things you'd use for your fire. Yeah, they've got a name, but I can't remember. I can't remember it either. Um, and what we used to say is we would say like, swing the poker. Right. And the poker would start swinging. And oh, we would say, stop the poker. And the poker would stop. And it was like, whoa. Oh, that's great. <laughs> no, but you see, the, just... what you do there, though, is you you go, there's, there's different levels. And what yeah. you've got is, because a lot of people say, uh, what ghosts are, they're vibrating at a different level, but they're on a different plane. They may be, uh-huh. they may exist just like we do, but they're on another plane, and you just catch a yeah. glimpse of them. Well, you've proven that that's not the case because you are actually communicating with one. Oh, I've got a video. I, I will send it. To you. I, I, Please, I, I'm sure I sent it a couple of years ago to you, but I don't know whether it got through. Right. We were, we had a. It was Rob's um, birthday, uh-huh. and we had some helium balloons. Right. And we were just messing around it one of them nights mm. and he was sucking on the helium balloons, making funny noises. Right. So I got my phone out and I started recording it. Right. Just literally because it was going to be one of those things that went on Facebook and 
and well, that was it. Uh-huh. So he's making these funny voices and, and saying funny things. And I had a hold of my phone and I thought, I've just seen something go across my phone, like a light. Right. So I stopped the video, looked at it, and sure enough, there was a light went across, straight across the, the video. Mm. So we videoed a little bit more and we were messing around with the balloons, seeing if there was like a reflection or anything. And I've got this all on video. Great. And then I said, why don't we just like start asking questions? Mm-hmm. So we sound right idiots because we're like, Okay, is there anybody there? <laughs> yeah, really. That's what <laughs> you see. That's what call. you see. And, right. and literally, we were asking who was there, and we were asking them to go from right to left and left to right, and the lights were going across the front of the camera, and we couldn't see that. We couldn't see them, but I've got them on the recording. Isn't that great? And every time we were saying, like, how many of you are there? And two lights would go across, two big orbs. Hmm. And then it was back the other way. It was it's amazing. It was absolutely amazing. Because you're leading it and it, it can't that's not anything that could be faked because you were both there together and yeah. it, it just did what you were asking it to do. That's uh, it's great stuff. Yeah, please get get me another copy of that, please. I'd love to yeah, see. Yeah, we used to have people stay over. And the first <laughs> time that we had somebody stay over, he came downstairs for his breakfast. It was one of Rob's colleagues. Yeah. And he was like, No, oh, what's the cat called? You never told me about that you had a cat. Right. I was like, we haven't got a cat. <laughs> yeah, he wanted he you like to have a cat. a cat just to explain noises, feelings, things that had touched him and all those kind he of was, things. Well, yeah. no, he said he saw the cat on the bed. It was a black and white cat. It was wow, Lee on the bed. There you go. It, it, was a, it was just one thing after another. It was a, a magical place. But it got to the point where the feeling inside of it was so... But one of it, it felt like we should be there. It felt so right. comfortable and so right. warm and so so all those things that like kind of scared us in the beginning. Yeah, you it was kind of like kind we of were welcomed in, with... and it was a it was a beautiful, magical place. It certainly sounds it. Hey, Alison, tremendous! Thank you very much for coming. What a great story. Yeah. Quite all right. Tremendous. I'll send you the videos in. Hey, please do. Look. We'll stick them on later. Don't laugh at our funny voices. No, that's <laughs> it's a give a give a guy a balloon with helium in. This this it's inevitable. You, we can't help no, ourselves. No, it's more what we were saying afterwards. All right. <laughs> I look forward to. It. Thanks a lot, Ali. The blue language. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're used to it. Thanks for coming on. Okay. Take well care. done, Bob. Boy, is she lovely? Night Owls on Greatest Hits Radio. You never know who's going to call next. 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. Now, I do know that probably a good few thousand of you were screaming at your radio a while back when Ali was talking about the little thing with the shovel and the poker and the various other bits that you would tidy your fire with back in the day. Gillian Swinbanks was the first to respond certainly uh, by email, by sending us the symbol phrase, companion set. Yeah, everybody had them back in the day when uh, when they had coal fires and such. Thank you, Gillian, and I couldn't, couldn't think of the name at all. Let us press on. Time for your second clue. Now, remember, we're looking for one word that links four answers together. The first clue is where farmers keep cows, sheep and horses. Okay, where farmers keep cows, sheep, and horses. Second clue, the type of pistol fired to begin a race. The type of pistol fired to begin a race. That's two clues down, two more clues to come, and you'll have them before you know it. This is the hour of the blah. Two, and maybe a little chat with George Michael. You never know if you're lucky. But let's cut across to Anonymous, who is in North Shields. Hello, Anonymous. Hello, Alan. Hello, darling. Did, Hello. I spoke did you... to you a couple of weeks ago. Yes. Um, asking if you know anything about Andrew Dunn and his fan, fan club and what have you. Yes, that's right. Did you get a chance to see him? I actually met him yesterday. Oh, that's great. What happened was a friend of mine had wrote to him via his um, agency. Right. And he didn't respond straight away. It took quite a while. And then last week, uh-huh. I think it must have been just as they're about to start in Darlington, mm-hmm. he uh, 
he sent her an email and said, yes, I would very much, I would like to meet. Aha, uh -huh, lovely. Uh, gave us the option of meeting in the morning, or uh, not in the morning, before the show or after the, the show. show. Right. And what time would I be there and what have you, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we managed to get back to him and tell him that I would, uh, I'd prefer to, to meet him before the show because I didn't want to get caught up amongst the whole load of other people right. waiting for other actors later on. Sure. And um, and that day I would be, I would arrive about one o'clock and I would be in a wheelchair. Right. And it was actually waiting in this foyer beside the box office, oh, waiting for me coming in. How nice is that? And That's as soon as, as I walked in, my daughter says, there he is, saw me straight away, and he came and he spoke to me immediately. Uh-huh. Lovely. And, you know, he really put me, he, I felt as if I'd known him all my life. Right. You know, it, it was really, really, really nice. I mean, I got a, um, a selfie with him. Uh-huh. And I got his autograph on my me, on me programme. Fantastic. And he's got a, he's, he's promised me he'll let us know the next, the next show he's in, so. Tremendous. Hey, well, but, well done. Congratulations. However you get to do it, as long as you... Is the result is you did. The That's result what is that counts. Did, uh, really, I, I, I couldn't have met a nicer man. Yeah, he's a lovely fella. He, he he's really, a, he's, really he's is. He's very gentle and he's sincere, and there's not too much of that in his business, I have to say. He yeah, was he, he, very nice. He was certainly very, very... Yeah, I, I couldn't believe just how nice he was. I mean, we were talking about stuff. But I've got a lot of stuff that he's been in. Yes, uh -huh. You know, yeah. and I was talking about it. I don't know if you've heard of the film um, Attack of the Adult Babies. No, no. Well, it's a, it's a film he's in, and it's the most bizarre movie you've ever seen in your life. <laughs> right. And I said to him, I said, I bought it. Uh. And he says, you're the one that bought it. <laughs> I says, why are you the one that sold it to me? Yeah, brilliant. You know, and he was, tell you know, he was telling me um, that he's, when they do... Um, when it showed Mids of Our Murders on the TV, hmm. the one that the episode he was in, he says, I still get paid for it. Right. Uh, that, that doesn't surprise me that that so does. So you still get much. paid for repeats that go on. So, yes. You know? Yeah, good. good. And, oh, really, 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 really pleasant, really nice. That's I couldn't, you, you couldn't fault the kind of person he is. No, but it was one of those things you wanted to tick that box and you, you've managed yeah. to, so well done. I, I did. I, so I see. I got a really nice selfie with him. I got a kiss and a cuddle of him. Hey, yeah, you see, it's all, it's all good. It's so all did my daughter. Who was with me? That's great. You know, but he, he was really. And we were, well, because he's lived in North Seals, we were talking about North Seals and whatever, you know. Yeah. As well as other things. I spent about half an hour talking to him in, in the foyer. So my daughter turned around and says, How are you? Let him go. He's got to get himself ready for the show. Yeah, absolutely. The show, the show was good? Yes, I enjoyed the show. Good. I mean, it, me, me daughter said, said to me as we were coming home, she said, I didn't think I would enjoy it. Mm. But she did, because there's a lot of bad language in it. But yeah. I've said that to him. Right. I said, that this attack of the adult babies has got bad language in it. And I said, I didn't much like your swearing. Mm. He says, well, there's bad language in this show, you know. Yeah. I says, yeah. I says well, I know that. But I said, but there's a difference. There's a co the context of the show, Band of Gold. Mm. Was about prostitute, yes, Prostit sure. prostitution in the red light district yes, yeah. in Bradford. Mm -hmm. and well, you, you can actually expect it in that yeah. kind of a no, thing, you know. Absolutely, of course. Sorry. But uh, oh, yeah. it was a really, really good show. I thoroughly enjoyed it. Hey, well, well done. I'm glad you managed to meet your hero as well. Well done, Andrew, for what he did. That was very Honestly, special. He's a real, I, I couldn't believe just how nice a person he is. Good stuff. Really, eh? you know, really nice. Well, well done, Anonymous, and thanks for letting me know. I, I wondered how you'd get on. Well done. Right, OK. Then thanks, love. Bye-bye. Right. How about that? And she's met her hero. Have you met yours? There's a thing. Have you met your hero? And incidentally, we are thinking of doing another one of those bus things, another grizzly trail, different places maybe this time. Um, and I know that Tony's been doing stuff online asking you guys what you want, where you want to go. I'm actually also thinking of doing a night owl trail. Nothing to do with the Grizzly. Just take it around where stuff's happened to do with the, the show over the, the years. That might be something that you would find funny, if nothing else. 0191 four double eight three one double eight. Been talking about food a lot, so Tim's gone for a curry. 
Uh, did anyone say just did? And Mark Aaron says, I'm finally getting Virgin Media Fiber Broadband and TV this Wednesday. I'm absolutely over the moon. I've been waiting since October, getting the complete oomph package, he says. That's the full TV package, including movies and sports, 500 millibit bups, fiber broadband, phone line, second V6 box for the bedroom, SIM card thrown in with unlimited calls, text, data, all for £89 a month, which is way better than the package I had at me mam's. There you are. Sorted, Mark. Hope it's great. Hope it gives you everything you want from it. And also, biggest fright, Ben Mabon says, Evening, Alan. I got stuck in a lift once, in between floors, and I have never been in one since, and it gave me liftophobia. Love the show as always. Thanks, Ben. Uh, always there. And Janice, Janice Ferguson, on Thursday, she's going to be 50 years on the planet, which is halfway there, just halfway. So congratulations, Janice the beginning of uh, of a fun decade, I hope for you. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Janet is out there, and Janet, I think, is in Newcastle upon the Tyne. Hello, Janet. Hello, Alan. Hello, love. What are you talking about tonight? Well, about what's happening in me flat. Um, what's that? I spoke to you all. I spoke to you years ago. I all love right. listening to you. Thank you. It's just like. Doors opening and shutting and footsteps uh-huh. coming along the landing and my handle turning and it's a bit scary. Right. But I did have the priest out once and that made it no better. Right, what did he do? Though? I mean, did he, I presume he just um, blessed the place, did he? Yeah. Right, yeah. right. Because usually when they come out, they bless the place and what you really need is an exorcism by the sound of things. So, so what we would normally do is go back to the guy who blessed it and say, thanks for coming out. Problem is it, it didn't really work and uh, we need the exorcist to come out. Can you contact him on our behalf? And then he contacts the exorcist, he sticks you on his list and as soon as he can, he gets up and uh, does a proper job for you. It's just strange, Alan, um... Like when I every flat I've lived in, when I view the flat, I sense something. Yes. Strange, yeah. No, I, I, but the thing is, because you've gone through what you've gone, you've already had the place blessed. That yeah. p- the peop- the person that you went to, whether he's a vicar or a priest, whatever, they yeah. they all use the same exorcist who happens to be Catholic. So, uh, mm. I th- I think you should really uh, take it to the next level and, and get yeah. it get it dealt with. The thing is, Alan, I'm scared and I'm not, but it's scary. <laughs> no, I know what you mean because you kind of get used to it if you've been in that situation yeah, for a while. Hey, yeah. Alan, I added you on Facebook the other day, Janice. Lovely. Well, thank you very much for that. <laughs> Glad you did. I don't know what I did, and Janice. There you go. Yeah. Brilliant. So, Alan, what will I do? I, I, I'm scared and I'm, I'm getting used to it, but the footsteps come towards us, and then when I get up the stuff, Right. Well, you see, if you're getting scared at all, and, and you still are, I would just go back to that vicar or priest and just ask him if he can get the exorcist to come and, and do more than just bless it, because blessing usually calms things down. It hasn't, yeah. it hasn't in your case, and that's the thing. If it hasn't worked, go back and ask if you can get the guy that can change it all together. Well, can I just say something, Alan, before you go, like, of the other night, like... Uh-huh. Had my foot. I was awake, right? And someone touched me foot. Yeah, and I thought, okay. is anyone in the flat? And I looked, you know, I got up and I was so scared. Put me foot, someone touched me foot. Oh, lovely. Just what you need. Hey, get it <laughs> get it done, Janet. Lovely talking to you. Thank you for oh. coming on. Oh, thank you, Alan. You're welcome. Oh, there you go. Oh, one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Uh, 0191 Few gags coming in. We wanted them about fast food, but they're coming in about all kinds. This just made me laugh because it was so stupid. What's green and brown and crawls through the grass? What's, what's green and brown and crawls through the grass? A girl guide who's lost a cookie. <laughs> 
and whatever that means. And why shouldn't you tell a secret on a farm? There you go. Why should you not tell a secret on a farm? Because the potatoes have eyes and the corn has ears. There you are. That's you, Telt. Right, let us press on. Sean from Concert, I think, is up next. And we have the blah very, very soon, too. Hi, Sean. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? I'm good. What can we do for you tonight? What's uh, what's it? Isn't it about time that the death penalty could, should come back now that we've got our supposed to have got our own rights coming out of Europe? Uh, we, I'm, I'm right here. You say it's supposed to have. Um, why why did you want it back then, Sean? Why, well, man? Another terrorist happening the day, man. You know what I mean? Right. Yeah, but you see... He was just out of prison a couple of days ago. Yeah. Yeah, but but you see, at the same time, British soldiers are in other countries blowing up villages. So their argument would be, I'm not saying he was right by any stretch, but their argument is, we'll keep terrorising you as best they can because you're doing this in a country where you've got no right to be. Do you think the judges are too old? How do you think they're too old? Well, you see, technically, if they, you say, bring the death penalty back, we've still got it on our statute books for... for uh, any, for the any, royal family? No, not just for that. It's a thing called treason. Now, if this guy is British, and I know his name is... Uh, I think it's Sudesh Amnan or, or something along those lines. Uh, Sudesh Aman, I beg your pardon... Um, and as you say, he's just got out of prison and he's also been convicted previously for carrying extremist material. But if he's British, if you wanted to kill him, we could because he's committed treason. If he's from another country and he's chosen to live here, I think that that also stands because technically he's against this country. And you got to remember that if you were, if you just happened to be, say, in Libya or Afghanistan or Iraq, where there's British troops, and he made some moves to stab them, they'd shoot him in the head and they wouldn't think twice about it. So, uh, arguably, why don't they do that in Britain? Why don't they simply just grab him, take him out the way and put him down? But, I mean, is uh, that really what the people want? Do the people want that? I think if there was a referendum in the morning... Quite good at referendums, I think it definitely will come back. Right. I'm not sure we'll ever get another referendum in later. <laughs> <laughs> what happened after the last one? But uh, but I hear what you say, and arguably, uh, Britain, even if Britain were still in Europe, they'd still have the facility to kill him if they wanted to. I mean, the, there's a few people in the press that people will be able to read tomorrow that say mm. we're worrying that ISIS, British ISIS suspects will be sentenced to death in Iraq and Afghanistan without having a fair trail. British ISIS people. Now, you see, to me, if they admit they're British ISIS people, Uh, that's enough, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. For for them to be shot or or whatever. Um, And do you want them back? Because I think the, the British government whether you like them or whether you don't, at least in this respect, they tried to keep the blood on somebody else's hands because when they were offered these people, and apparently they got hundreds of them, hundreds of Brits that uh, went over to join ISIS, they've got loads of them now in prisons all over that part of the world, and they Uh. contacted Britain and said, do you want these people back so you can take them to trail? And they all said... No, nope. next. And <laughs> just get on. They just didn't want them at all. And I don't, uh, I, I absolutely don't blame them. And the Americans would have done exactly the same, knowing that if you left them there, they'll they'll be in a hole at some point. You know, that's. Um, I mean, it's just, it's just the way they've gone on, you know what I mean? If you do 10 years, you, do, you should mm. do 10 years. You shouldn't come out early. Mm. I don't think that's it. I've never that's... understood that because people have people have always said since I was a little boy, ah, the best justice system in the world is the British system. And you think, wait, well, no, it's actually not because you've got no. you've got people going to prison for uh, sexual assault, get, oh. 
and they're supposed to do a year, they do six months, and they're out and they're sexually assaulting somebody else within the week. Yeah. Within the week, yeah. they get out. Some people just, I mean, like rapists should never be let out at all, full stop. Because when do you hear of a rapist who's just raped one person? Exactly. Well, you don't. Uh, they end up raping half a dozen, a dozen, and some of them don't even come forward because, you know, of, of the stigma attached to it. No, I, I agree with you that if you're going to have a send somebody to prison for a year, I, I, it's 365 days of anybody's money. That's it. And you don't uh, you don't get out early. And the other thing that really boils my whittle is when you hear stories like he committed three murders, but he was allowed out for the weekend to pop into town, and and you go, whoa, uh, what? Uh, A murderer was allowed to pop out into town, and and, uh, and do what exactly? Plan his next murder? Oh, we're we're mad in this country. From a justice point of view, we've got we've got. No idea, really. I mean, even in prison, you know, we're told that prison guards think it's it's like a, a people having a party and drugs. It's too easy to get drugs in and all the rest. We can't even keep drugs out of prison. No. And we can't keep people in <laughs> in prison. It's it's madness. It does need to you be You know that he, it, he even had a tag on him, this one that done it the deer. They reckon he had a, a, a tag, tag on him. On him. I mean, what the hell is the point in having a tag on if they're, if they're, if they're not going to... I always think, you know, when, when I hear about tags, I can't remember the name of the film, but I bet a few night owls do. There was a movie where they allowed people who are guilty of horrible crimes to, uh, be, to be out of prison, but they couldn't leave the grounds. And uh, they, they had these things around their neck. And if they uh, went too far... It blew their heads off. <laughs> so they had to stay within the grounds. And if they tried to take it off, it blew, uh, their, it blew their head off. And they had to stay within 10 yards of the fence. They couldn't get any nearer. Otherwise, it would blow their heads off. And a few of them had their heads blown off, and everybody else didn't even think about taking it off or didn't think about going close to the wire. And, yeah. you know, if you're going to... Uh, people are probably listening thinking, that's a crazy idea. If if it's a murderer or a rapist, yeah, there's some yeah. people think they shouldn't be on the planet anyway. A lot of people think they should be hanged or, or whatever. But to me, they should never be let out. No, no woman should have to go through, or man should have to go through those kind of crimes. Not and if we all. if we catch somebody, we should keep them inside. But if you're going to let them out at all, let them have one of them collars on and say, mind you, there'll be. <laughs> Aye. Mind you, you go too far, and you know what'll happen to you. And you'd see them yeah. sitting on the step. They would, <laughs> they wouldn't walk. <laughs> they wouldn't walk very far. That's for sure. Uh, exactly. Now, exactly. So sometimes sci-fi movies come up with an idea, and you think, mm, maybe who knows? No, not bad ideas, aye. <laughs> Anything uh, exactly. else, then, Sean? No, that's all right. Can you put us in the hat for anything, mate? I will certainly do that. Thank you very much. Yeah, we've got a few bits and bobs. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. Sean there and Constance going to take one more call and then let's hear a little bit from George Michael. Then we possibly get the blah kick in. Hello, Matthew. Hello, Alan. You all right, mate? I'm good. How are you? I'm fine. I went out with Ian on Wednesday. Oh, lovely. Where'd you go? I went down to the game shop at Shields and I bought Dead Rising 4 and I bought Battlefield Hotline. But the funniest thing, what well, Ian did, Alan, he left his, he left his flask in the shop. <laughs> oh, no. Has he gone back for us? He went back for it, yeah, but he, but he says, he says, stop laughing, and Matthew and I said, oh, well, I was just having a bit fun. He was laughing, I was laughing. <laughs> <laughs> and he wasn't having it, Ian says, I forgot my flask. I better go back and get it. So oh, I, wow. I said, Ian, I said, don't worry, I'm younger than you. You go, <laughs> me and you will go and get it. We'll go back and get it. Right. Obviously, good lad. Yeah. So how's your week been? You had a good week? Been very good, thank you very much. So... Have, yeah. you, have you been out uh, on a beach anywhere? Because normally you like going down the I'm beach. Going the, I'm going to the beach on Wednesday. Oh, I was that's at the good. Last week, Champion. At the, beach, the beach last week. Right. And I've had a good time. I've been watching Vera. Vera at the night. It was the last episode. I'm very sad about that. Oh, that's sad. Yep. Yeah. It's sad. She'll be back, though. I know. She'll I've be been back. watching um, the Big Bang Theory again. Been watching them again. Had good. a good time watching you, them. You like I really them. enjoy my um, Big Bang Theory. Yeah, absolutely. I thought... 
I thought when Stephen Hawkins was in it, I thought, oh, bless him. Uh, bless Stephen Hawkins, bless yeah. him. Lovely man. man. It's a shame. It really is. It's a shame. Yeah. You know what I mean? You know, you know, Alan, when Xbox 360 dies off, it's probably gonna, I'm probably going to be in tears when it goes, you know, the you Xbox think? 360. Yeah, it, probably, it means, it. It means that much it. to you, does it? Yeah. Oh, it was my first gaming station, but according to the company Xbox who made it, they said it's still covered and they still covered because Xbox One's are backward compatible, but it means so much to me, the system. Mm, I loved it. Yeah. Even even when you did get the red ring of death, I always know if you get the red light of death, that means your Xbox is completely dead. But if you put thermal paste on the processors, it stops your Xbox breaking, but you know, right. it just it means so much to me. You know what I mean? I love the console. Yeah. I mean, it's just... It's going to be sad that day when that comes. Mm, this scene of Chris is listening. PlayStation 3 is online for the meantime. And when PS5 launches, it, at the end of this year, PS3 will be gone offline for good. Yeah, can, yeah that's sad. Three more things. Okay. Um, has the weather been nice today, Alan? It's been okay, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I'm saying, yep. Yeah. Alan, you know, if you get the seven days back again, will you be bringing SoundCloud back? Is it going to be gone forever? I'm just wondering. Um, it, it may well come back, but we just have we to wait and see. Yet. Fingers crossed. That's right, yes. Um, I'll do some shout-outs. Shout-out to Marion Jimmy, shout-out to Neil, shout-out to my Stephanie, Linda from Barrister, Jean from Redican, Ian McCara, who's funny, who lost his flask. <laughs> what can I go and ask for? I'll about three more things. Well, that's great. Well, we'll, sort of, we'll hopefully put you in for the competition at the end. Thanks very things. much, Math. Three more things. Um, Alan, um, yep. You know, um, have you been? You know, uh, did you have? Did we left Brexit now? That's good, isn't it? You think so? Yeah, I think it's a good thing okay. that we've left. Good. I was. Did you have the virus? What people's got? Yeah, it's scary, isn't it? Yeah. I'm saying for you, Dettel. I said, <laughs> I bet I'll give you a bit of advice. I say, Ian, if you go in the bath, you and Dettel. A shout out to Tony and Chris. Um, Alan, can you? Are you going to put this on the YouTube tonight or tomorrow? Because it's not. Can you put it on straight away before you leave? So can you have it again? No, I think it'll be. It'll, it'll by, be by the end of the week. You'll have them all. You'll okay. have them all by then. Okay. Thanks a lot, Matthew. Good night, Alan. Bye. Bye. There you go, Ross Batista. Would you like to give me a shout out the neat? Shout to Ronnie Batista. Keep your head above the water and keep your cards close to your chest. From your oldest, Ross. There you go, that's what's coming. If anybody wants a, a request, there you go. Tim says that colour that blows your head off is apparently only for TV licence fraud now. I, I, I understand. And Cumson, more scared. Oh, I can understand this. The most scared that I've been was missing the turn off to Widrington in the dusk and driving around all of those country roads. I was nearly crying, I was shaking. Absolute respect to you for driving around those roads at three in the morning, going home. And uh, it, it can be a, a shaky thing, absolutely. The worst one of those that I've had, and I'll tell you roughly where it is, uh, Shill Bottle. There was a diversion, so you couldn't get up the A1, and this says diversion, go off at the road just below Shill Bottle. Now... Okay, so I headed off, there's the furthest road south, and I headed into the countryside, and there was no yellow signs to say Dive, you were on the right road for diversion. There was just a road getting smaller and smaller and smaller, and all of the vegetation on the side of the roads getting closer and closer and closer, until I was driving down this road, hitting vegetation off both sides of the car at the same time. And it was like... This can't possibly be right. And I'm I'm now driving, because obviously if a car could come the other way, what do I do? Reverse a mile? A two mile? That'd be ridiculous. Fortunately, none did. And I got to this V in the road, and there was no sign left or right, whichever way I was supposed to go. But as I was heading north, I thought, take the right turn and head roughly northerly. And after about... 40 minutes of visiting villages I didn't even know were there, you come back out on the A1 because they diverted the road before they'd had a chance to put their, those yellow diversion signs out. So after a while, your heart's going, you're obviously in the wrong place. <laughs> this, is, this is obviously not the right road. But you, you, know, you battle through. You've got no option if you're going to get home. 
And Tony's on about the terrorist as well. Interesting view. If he's from this country, the argument that we're bombing villages in foreign countries doesn't stand. Well, that's the excuse they're using. It's not my argument, too. But anyway, if he's an immigrant, why is he living in a country he hates? Good riddance to the cowardly scum. Is what Tony says. Do you agree? Because whether you like it or not, um, his, his life was taken. That was the death penalty, wasn't it? Right there. And maybe the government's saying, look, don't wound him. Don't bring him to court. Just finish him where they are. And that, whether you like it or not, is the death penalty. Anyway, it is now time for something rather special. You know what it is. And we are gathering the clans. I think, do we have to take a break first or, or not? We're going to play a, a tune first and then we're going to blah. Now. Night Owls with Alan Robson. What are we talking about next? You make the call. 0191 488 3188. Greatest Hits Radio. You are with the big one, Alan Robson here. And it is now time a little bit later than we would normally have it. But let's blah. It is basically when we gather the clans we have with us at the present moment, producer of the stars, Hollywood McShane. Good evening. Hello. And also, fellow presenter, Chris Felting. Hello, are you? There you go. So, we always begin with telling you what's texting, what's trending, what's happening. We've had some of your views. We want more. Call us now. However, what is the national newspaper uh, of your choice? doing well you're going to find out long before they ram it hard through your letterbox in the morning so let's take a look first at the daily mail oh. and why did they let him out a terrorist released from jail days ago after serving just half his sentence was under police surveillance yet he was still free to stab two victims before being shot dead it's a waste of his life. Does it achieve anything? Does it get British forces out of foreign countries? No, it doesn't. Um, Why did they let him out, though? I mean, if he's, he's a well, known because, terrorist. Because British justice, in my opinion, is namby-pamby. Instead of letting people serve their, their entire sentence and prisons are full, I accept that. Build more. It's not like we're short of bricklayers and but crimes that he's d like terrorism. That's a that's you would think they'd keep them for the full well his term. His crime was purely having well, it's bad enough, but purely having terrorist material. So that's bad enough. They should not let them out, really. Right. Okay. Well, I'm I'm absolutely in agreement. Uh, he's dead now, so he'll not do it again. The Daily Mirror terror on the high street freed. Just days ago, stab attack Jahari was out on licence. He's shot dead by undercover cops. And uh, on our streets, unknown to us, certainly in London, and I think probably in all of the main centres like Manchester, Birmingham, Newcastle. Definitely. I think we've got undercover cops that are armed that just walk in the streets and watch like out for it. So. Uh, and uh, some people would think that's horrific, but... Uh, we need it these days. Absolutely. Well, here we go. Financial Times. And it's something That's that... early is, tonight. I know, but it, it's involving something close to our heart. Nissan draws up a plan for a UK pivot if Brexit leads to EU trade barriers. Now, they're, they're worrying. Like, we've already lost seven car companies because of just the thought of Brexit. And uh, the government promised Nissan... Don't worry, we look after you. Subsequently, that promise, because it was Boris, has been reneged on, as we heard a couple of weeks ago. So now Nissan are looking at a UK pivot. So if Brexit leads to a trade barrier and they can't sell their cars abroad, they'll move abroad. Seems to be the way. And I know the, the guys working down there don't want to hear that, but be interesting to see exactly what their... Um, their ambition for 20% of the market, a bid to exploit a competitive edge, and they say that some Europe plants for Nissan would close as well. Not what we want to hear, but uh, we wish the guys at uh, 
uh, Nissan the very best because they've they've been amazing. They've their work's been immaculate. They've they've beat uh, you know the the targets that have been set time and time and time again. The Metro newspaper, Sam's the man. Apparently, Sam Mendes has won a BAFTA. Do you care? No. He's What's he in for? Nineteen Seventeen. That oh movie. yeah, that's meant to be good. That he did the Bonds as well, didn't he? The last couple of Bonds or one he, or two. He did. He did it up. Yes. The guy that done the Joker one as well. I, I, I see. I, I really want to see the Joker. I haven't seen it. It's, it's out now on Sky and DVD. So. All oh, right. We'll have to. Definitely. I have to have a look. Shot terrorist just out of jail. Convicted extremist stabs two in the street. Um, we know that uh, we feel that they're both going to survive it and we wish them well. Daily Express, terror returns. Police shoot dead suicide vest maniac who injured three. Knife Jihadi freed days earlier. This perhaps teaches the government a lesson to let them serve their full sentences, maybe if they learn anything from it. The Daily Telegraph, a freed terrorist strikes again. He's lying there dead in the street. And the UK won't accept EU rules as the price of a trade deal. And, uh, well, that's that's what the deal is. The deal is if you trade with us, you accept our terms as we accept your terms. Um, will we get a deal? Well, the Americans are now being a bit sniffy about dealing with us and we're, we're going to be a bit hard... Uh, Playing hard to get with the Americans. I've heard they do chlorine. They wash their chickens in chlorine. Does that bother you? Yeah, absolutely. I, I, uh, is dust. that not a good thing because it gets rid of all the crap? Well, you see, this is the problem. Too much chlorine, bad thing. A little bit of chlorine is okay, but we've got chlorine in our water anyway. Yeah. And we get chlorine in our toothpaste apparently, anyway. But I just don't want to wash me chicken with it. That's not a <laughs> euphemism. Before you start. I was sitting in home wash, <laughs> <laughs> washing me chicken with. I know, but no, it was. Uh, uh, it's not something that you'd want, really, is it? Come on. I, There's no. plenty of spices you can put on a chicken other than chlorine. The Daily Star, after award special, London terror attack, freed to go on a rampage. Jihadist who killed, who knifed to, rather, tracked by officers after early release. Now, if that's true. Why did he? Why was he given the chance to, to stab? Should have a thing on, like a tag or a what they're called. He did have a tag. Oh, he had a tag. Yeah. Yeah. He said that the police were there in minutes, in which tells you well they were obviously literally tracking him. But mm -hmm. he know. shot dead in the street while wearing a fake suicide vest. The Guardian terror attacker freed from jail and on a police watch list, and alignment not on the table in EU talks, says Johnson. Daily Mail, already done that. Down the Times, terror returns to the streets of London, and they happen to be the first for football. And Johnson says, I'd rather accept tariffs than obey EU rules. Now, think about that for a second. If you're a business, especially if you're Nissan, a tariff means that for you to sell your car abroad, it will be between one, two, or three thousand pounds more expensive for Europeans to buy. So they'll buy Volvo or BMW or, or whatever. But then they're not going to pay an extra three grand for their car. But Boris says that they, they'll accept the tariffs. OK. He might not be telling the truth because he does a bit of that. Who knows? Uh, OK, that is your front page headlines. I hope there was something there to, to make you think. Or maybe just look forward to it... Uh, Getting rammed through your letterbox. Okay. Chris Felton, what you got? So it's Stonehenge. I didn't actually know this myself, but there's a pub right near Stonehenge. There just is. behind it called the Stonehenge Inn. <laughs> I was going to say, is it called the Stonehenge Inn? Because it couldn't be called Inn. anything else. Well, what, what they've done is genius. Because they've been getting complaints from a lot of people, some of their regulars, that they can't get in, they can't get near the actual Stonehenge Monument because it's so busy all year round, obviously, it's a mm -hmm. huge tourist attraction. They've erected in the beer garden a three foot tall version of Stonehenge of the monument brilliant for all of their regulars all Quite their cool. customers who can't get close to the real thing on the day they go and pay homage pilgrimage to the actual with a pint with a pint in hand to the Stonehenge monument in the beer garden instead because uh, have you ever driven past Stonehenge I've never no, been I've there never down there because I have and it's a nightmare because doesn't matter how many times the people who live there 
have driven past it and it's it's their route to work yeah. or to the shops or whatever. There's always about every third motorist hasn't. So they're slowing down and they're, you know, on the 30 road they're doing like six mile an hour and everybody else has got to stop. That's probably what I'd do because I haven't seen yeah. it. That, that, that thing, <laughs> ex- exactly. So, so you gotta be you got to be super careful. I've been down there for uh, a summer solstice once where all the hippies and druids and stuff were all out waving their flags. It was like Glassdoor. You know, it was a bit like Glastonbury. And uh, that was that was very pleasant. But uh, the bottom line of it is you, you don't get the chance ever, I don't think, because quite often they'll not let you get close to the stones. Mm-hmm. And the whole point for people who might believe in nature, which is essentially the people, you know, the, the old faiths, you want to touch the stone, you want to feel the stone, you want to, you know, all of that. Mm-hmm. And they don't let you do that now in, in a lot you of cases. you got to pay to see it, do you think? I don't know. I didn't, I I didn't, don't know if I didn't pay no. to see it. I mean, it's only just... a few stones, isn't it, really? So it's... <laughs> well, it's, a little bit, it's a little bit more than that. And it's also, how did they get there? Because oh, yeah, I mean, it's those, fascinating. Those stones came from Wales and there's no way you could possibly move them. Amazing. I bet you these ones in the pub garden go missing uh, <laughs> once or twice. Oh, well, they're, they're easily moved because yeah, you put they're... them in your pocket. <laughs> what have you got then? Yeah, so. well, if you've got a dog, mm-hmm. do you let it sleep in your bed? Oh, this will be I mean, you've had a cat. Did your cat sleep in your bed? I have to say, yes. There yeah. you go. Well, yeah. my dog, one of mine, sleeps in my bed. Yeah. But apparently 45% of people allow their dogs to sleep in bed. It's but it's wrong. It's not, though, because it's it's sci- the, the, co- um, the scientists have said it's actually good for your health. It's wrong. It's good for it's anxiety, mm-hmm. security. It's good for... For us or the dog? Bonding, both. Oh, well, hang on, hang on a second, just, just to cut and pick a bit. <laughs> the, the thing about stroking a dog or a cat, it reduces stress. Reduces blood pressure as well. In, in some cases, they take them to old people's homes and, and let, yeah, them, yeah. let them have it. Because stroking things... Depends what you want to stroke. I've stroked things all my life and it's kept my blood pressure down. <laughs> and w- with respect to having a cat in your bed or a dog, and I was wrong to have the cat. I genuinely feel I was wrong. Why? And I'll tell you the reason why. I saw my cat climb into the bed. I wasn't in bed. I saw it climb under the quilt. And it sat up under the quilt. So it's just a lump in the bed when I lifted the quilt to chase him on the white sheet was a bum shrapnel mark oh no that looked just a bit like a keyhole oh and it was because you know the lick at the bottom is where the poo comes and so do dogs they do yeah so that but dog th- that dog's just had a poo he's coming to the to your bedroom he's thinking bit itchy round a hoop I'm going to go into the bed and do that thing where back paws up in the end Arrive me backside. <laughs> no, it Because they're do that. wormy and horrible, dirty, filthy beasts. But it's beasts. good to have a bit of dirt because it, it makes you immune to them. Like you, no one oh, can be too clean because it's bad for you. Tell these people with the with the uh, the coronavirus. Bit of bit of <laughs> get a bit of bacteria. It's good. It can kill you. Some people have died of have died of this. Kind. Of, also, having a dog in the bed. Yeah. And, Who's oh, died of that? <laughs> well, a lot of children have gone blind due to toxic car. Eh? You can't deny that. I've never heard of anybody it's, do that. It's a, well, it's common yeah. that if a child touches dog poo, yeah, I've heard that. Which like could in be the park and stuff. which could well, or on your sheets apparently, oh, sheets. <laughs> and then they touch their eye, they would they could be blinded yeah. if, because there's a toxic car of parasite or virus. Some, I mean, my mum wipes the dog's bum, so I mean that wouldn't happen in her case. <laughs> <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> Uh, but I'm sure that people do as you, well. Well, you know, <laughs> but they're dirty people. It's dirty people that do that. Surely they're good. You don't let yeah, you don't let animals. Forty five percent of people let them sleep in their beds. Forty five percent of you dirty people. You're just dirty, filthy it's people. It's good for you. No, it's filthy. Good health and well being. It's not more. You know, it's feces. Whichever way you look at it. Well, if you change your sheets regular, it's fine. I'm sure. Oh, oh, but that's another statistic in itself. Well, does your dog not sleep in the bed? Yeah, it, it does occasionally. There you go. Yeah, now and again. I bet why, loads of people listening why? have a dog in their bed with them now. Dirty people. <laughs> Dirty, filthy people. It's controversial. Stinky hoosers. But, because uh, we're told that if you've got a dog or a cat, either or, and you let them stay in your house so they're keeping on the couch or they're keeping on a chair, or even if they've got a bed uh, on a carpet somewhere, that those houses... 
whether you like it or not, and it doesn't matter how much you clean, have dormant fleas in the carpets, in your curtains, in your They're couch. They're not going to harm you. And then what will happen at some point, the dog or the cat will die, because they all will eventually die, and uh, then when you walk past, the flea will sense your body heat and uh, <laughs> jump out of its egg... Very and, scientific. And onto you. Opera, this, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Not, how far away from Amber is How many it? people are itching right now? <laughs> dirty people are itching. Just dirty people. Clean people. And I should never let the cat sleep in the bed. But it, it's hard not to, isn't it? Yeah, because, yeah, yeah, you, you do tend. But I would rather have them out. You don't want them in where you've got gubbins. If it's cold, he, mine goes in under the duvet yeah. sometimes. But he's got a little duvet With on the bed. With your naked body. Sometimes, yeah, but I've got a little... That's perverted, it's wrong. <laughs> of course it's not. He doesn't, he, he doesn't take his fur feet. off, does he? He goes to the bed with his, with his well, full outfit. <laughs> he only sleeps on my feet, like legs, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, but he'd smell and they smell you and they lick you. It's only little thing. <laughs> Because yeah. if you think about it, dogs, you know when dogs go <laughs> round, where do they go? When, well, when, when well the dogs are hoops and well, things like that. Precisely. <laughs> so you're fast asleep. You're the head of the herd, you know, because the dogs treat you as the yeah. leader of the pack. Yep. That's why they call him the leader of the pack. They'll sniff your bum when you sleep. <laughs> I've never woke up it's with a dog. <laughs> <laughs> it's inevitable. That. And you. You must be <laughs> head of the what herd. What is that? Yeah, thinking about that. Yeah. <laughs> I wonder what that was the other night. Wait. But it's inevitable, isn't it? They'll sniff your bum. What? We, no, mine's never sniffed mine. They sniff. Uh, you, would, you, know? you wouldn't see just, him. Well. Be fast yeah. asleep. That's a good point. He's there. I set up a camera. Just it's just wrong. It's act. dirty, dirty, dirty. Anyway, Nadels, what do you think of that? Because that is what we loosely describe as the blah. Heaven help us. I was in trouble last week because we were joking about fakers. Tonight, sneaky suspicion. I'm not going to get away with that. But let's see. Oh one nine one four double eight three one double eight. We're waiting for you on the Nadels. Whatever you have to say, let's make it happen. The voice of the North. Alan Robson's Night Owls. The phone-in that gets you talking. Now, we have to say, we have had a few calls from dirty people. Uh, <laughs> but they're animals. Do you sleep with your beasts in your bed? You'd not sleep with your iguana, would you? In You know, in bed or anything like that. It's just wrong. Uh, anything with a hoop. If it's human, that's all right. If it's not human, mm, think twice about it. Anyway... Let's crack on, because it's time for the third clue already. Clue number one is where farmers keep cows, sheep and horses. That's your first clue. Second clue, the type of pistol fired to begin a race. The type of pistol fired to begin a race. The third clue, a word for incredible, and to help you with that, what a white shark is. It's not just called a white shark. It's called a something white shark. That's the word we're looking for. And you add to that word a word for testicles. Okay? Add to that word a word for testicles. So you've now got three clues. We're looking for something. You may know the answer. Hang on in there. Will you hear a fourth clue before getting in touch? Okay? Now, we're going to play you an absolute classic, a bit of Amy and a bit of Mark Ronson, and I asked him about his music. I just knew that I loved music so much and uh, I needed to find a place for myself in it, and I through the DJing and the production, and that's kind of what's led me to here, but uh, there was no pressure from, the, from you know my stepdad because he was in a rock band to do oh. it. In fact, he, he was kind of like, he, he was a bit confused when I was going through my <laughs> DJ stage because he was a bit like, oh, when, you know how a normal dad would say, when are you going to put that guitar down and go back to yeah, law school? Yeah, He'd yeah. say, when are you going to put down your turntables and go back to guitar? <laughs> <laughs> so has he put any pressure to bear saying there should be a, a few more serious axe breaks on the record then? Um, no, he knows I'm pretty useless, but I, d I definitely <laughs> did. Um, we had fun. It was the first time we worked together um, for his last record by his band Foreigner. Right. We did a song together, and it was the first time you know we've been in the studio together, and it was it was kind of, it was nice to have that after you know him being a guiding cat force in my life musically for twenty years, and then to work on something together was nice. Yeah, for sure. Is is that going to go anywhere else, or has that moment been in yeah. gone? 
it's on the it's it's on the Foreigner album. It's a song called Fool for You Anyway, and I'm sure that, you know there'll be more stuff in the future as yeah. well. I mean, he was always a sc- sounding boardist whenever I finish anything new. Fool for You Anyway is a really good. It's it's one of the classic style of Foreigner ballads, really, because Foreigner have always been really good at that kind of stuff. So good work. Now it's little Pipes. Now do not forget tomorrow morning with Rossi, the morning moldy mystery oldie. Can you work that out? It's really happening at the present moment. Make sure that uh, you listen in, see if you can solve it. Lots of stuff going on. Then, of course, there's Mark Goodyear with a top ten at ten, Andy Crane and Darren Proctor. And across the evening, a music marathon every hour with Rick Orton. Let us press on. We have next Lurking in the Darkness. It is William from Castletown. Hello, William. Hello, Alan. Hello, mate. How you doing? I'm doing fine, Alan. That's good. It's my birthday on Wednesday. Oh, is it? Happy birthday. What are you going to do to celebrate? Nothing much. It's my sister's coming around and all that. Oh, that's nice. So you have a nice meal and a bit of company. That's uh, good. I'm, six, I'm 63, Alan. Right. Uh-huh. 63. Gotcha. Yeah. Happy birthday, mate. I, well I can, done. can I have a, a, a signed photograph? Can you have a what? Sign photograph. Photo. Oh, of course you can. Yeah, we we've got new pics out. Yeah, absolutely. We'll make sure that that happens. Yeah. Send you a few bits and bobs. That's lovely. No worries. Uh, I, I'll be I'll be I'll be watching my favorite actor this year. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Chuck Norris. Yes, yeah, it good. Yeah. Uh, what Texas Rangers? <laughs> right. Yes. Uh huh. I love that. Uh, I love the um, Chuck Norris in it. In that, in that, <laughs> he's brilliant, Alan. Yes, he is. I remember him cropping up in the uh, the expen in one of the expendable films. Chuck Norris. Yeah, he was. Makes an appearance, doesn't he? That's he, right. He's absolutely brilliant, Alan. Yeah, yeah, he's your favourite, is he? Ah, uh, one of my favourites. That's good. Hey, but, no, uh, no worries. The, the, the CDs is expensive, and, and DVDs are expensive. Definitely. Oh, yeah, you're absolutely. You've got to be careful. Yeah, he, he, he made a, he made a song. He, he made it. He made a single. Uh huh. Uh, the Texas Rangers theme music. Theme music. Uh huh. Yeah, it's uh, it's on a CD, but it's very expensive. Yeah, no, I mean the, uh, you know, you'd think it's all technology now. You'd think that it would be really quite cheap, but uh, yeah, uh, it still stacks up if you if you're buying a lot of them. That is for sure. It's called uh, the Eyes of the Ranger. Uh huh. Right. Uh, the theme music. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my eyes open for it. Anything else then, Will? No, it's... Uh, it, it's, it's, it's uh, I've been trying to get... I've been trying to get all of you... Uh, you've always been busy. Right, OK. Well, stay on the line. Yeah. I'm going to send you something for your birthday. Hang on in there. Cheers, William, and all the best to you. Hang on in there. As we go across to... Well, you guessed it. It's Jean! Hello, Jean! Hello, Hello, Hello. Jean. How are you doing? What you been up to then? Um, all the love, really. What you been doing? Um, well, going to shop the other day. Ooh. Um, Did you get anything been, nice? I've been up there, um, up there, um, places a day. Some lamb. Just got some little bit. Been up for a for a lamb? No, I've up to up to the spices, man. Down down. Up to spices. Aye. Oh, Bryson's. Oh, Bryson's. Oh, I have got you. Did you get anything? Yes, I got it. Um, a couple of weeks set on the other end. Um, hanging up, I was hanging on the ropes. Right. Hold up. Right. He's lovely and all. So you got a lamb? No. Because I thought they just did cats and dogs. I haven't got a lamb. You haven't got a lamb? No. Oh, OK. I thought you there. might have got some lamb for your dinner or something. Did no. they do? Did they do meat there as well? I don't have no. okay. I don't. Uh, don't meet there. Fair enough. I love Italian stuff, you know. It's lovely. Right, that's good. Potato, eh? Excellent. I'm talking to Anne. Oh, you're talking to Anne, not, not, not a lamb, right? I'm, you know what I'm saying? Yes, I see. The, get the muck of your ears. No, uh, <laughs> yeah. It's we're wearing dirty headphones. It's like sleeping with dirty dogs and cats and so. You would never yeah. sleep with an animal in your bed, would no, you? No, no, I'm not in No. No, no, I can't oh, no, I don't. No, oh, I don't do no. that. Even, even people who ride horses, you wouldn't want a horse in your bed either, would you? No, that's not... no we just horse wouldn't. Horse in your bed, yeah. Yeah, you just wouldn't. 
or a to <laughs> or a tortoise. You, you know? need no. No, no. No, leave them alone. Some of the taste of it doesn't Yeah, because oh, it, it's yeah. like I remember once I had a I had a hamster. Huh? Like a little little hamster, and I was just a just a kid, just like four or five year old, and I remember it crawled up the arm of me, it crawled up the arm of me pajamas, <laughs> and it went it went to sleep. <laughs> Where my elbow is, oh, yeah, elbow. so I couldn't move much. But when he came back down again, yeah. he'd pooed about five or six times up my sleeve. <laughs> That's disgusting. You can't trust pets. <laughs> Shouldn't have them next to your bare <laughs> skin, in my opinion. Hell, no, dear. Hell, hell. You never slept with a dog? No. Oh, I have. No. I mean, no, I mean, some, pe <laughs> some people have. Some people have. <laughs> <laughs> some, I mean, some people have oh, well, right, there you go. <laughs> cats That's and terrible stuff. Laugh. Terrible. You've been lost on the moon. Horrible, horrible. <sighs> if you're on the telly, I'm first to stop. Yeah. Oh, horrible. Cost him his life and served him right. Absolutely. Well. Yep. Are you worried about this new Chinese outbreak? Oh, I. Are you wearing no. a mask at the minute? No. Get no. a mask on, Jean. No. No, oh, you should. <laughs> Yeah, there's a few up there. Oh, Should put some of them yellow overalls on in a big like spaceman helmet. Oh, yeah. Picture Not in you. Not number one, man. Mm. Yeah, that hospital. Maybe the only thing that saves us if you haven't got any debt all. Huh? Yeah. That's all I've got from debt Oh well, there you are. You'd probably pro probably be I've all right got then. Yeah, right. can't smell it, but I'll take your word for it. I've got I've got debt on all. Right. No stuff. Right. Primitive Express. No, I've just. I've got a. Pr I've got a Primitive no, Express. Man. I've request for a, a, a song. A request for who? A song. For who? Me. Oh, what what song would you like then? Uh, convoy, convoy. Convoy. Oh, I see rubber duck and all of that. Yeah. I always thought that was rhyming slang. I don't know. Right. Okay. Must be. Right, must be. I'm not sure. Right. This is rubber duck. I'm just popping into town for a rubber duck. It was uh, C W McCall. Oh, that's it. Hey, you turn the taxi on the radio. Yeah. Looks like we got us a convoy. Ah, that's very good. That was funny. I tracked from the long, long ago. There you go. It is lovely. So, what you got lined up for this week? Anything nice? Uh, someone. I don't know. Oh, I'm going somewhere on Thursday. We don't know where it is. No. Yeah, I don't know what we were filming. What's a surprise? I'm going to... No! I'm going to a funeral, Are you going to a funeral? Oh, yes, Mary. All oh, right, I'm sorry then. Mary, ma'am. Right, I'm, I will, I'm, I'm sorry for the loss. Oh, I know. That's a shame. Lovely baby. Right. I'm All right, do you want to say hello to anybody then, Jane? Yeah. Hello, Belinda from Palestine. Oh, she's coming on. Uh, hello, so what are you going to talk about? Uh, when's your birthday? It's Wednesday, I think. Oh. Wednesday. I'm going to call for a try. Right. Uh -huh. um, I don't want to say, I haven't done yeah, much of what I call her. Lost my mum. Um, right. What I call her? Um, oh, Bernadette, that's it. Oh, Bernadette, yes. I've never heard of her. Yeah. What a shame. Shampoo Molly. Shampoo Molly, absolutely. Uh -huh. And uh, Claire and Richie. Claire and Richie. Uh huh. And uh, oh, I and I'm from Morley. Right. I'm from Morley. Right. You book up to one of the Perry Market. You book up to one of the Perry Market. Right. Yeah. Because I tell you what, Jean, will you do me a favour? Well, All I want you to say, repeat after me. Well, rumpy, pumpy. Rumpy, what? Rumpy, say it again. <laughs> no, just say it again, Jean. <laughs> No, I'll, I'll just tell you, just go rumpy pumpy. Rumpy <laughs> Right, and then go rumpy pumpy rumpy pumpy. <laughs> now, come on, say it so people can hear you. Rumpy pumpy rumpy pumpy. Right, now what, what I want you to do is, is add a bit of music to you. I want you to go rumpy pumpy rumpy pumpy rumpy uh -huh. pumpy. Do that. 
There you go, you say you brought the track in there. Well done. <laughs> Thank you, Jude. Bye! <laughs>